women are goddesses, especially if they're white. White uh, women can do no wrong, right? They're they're literally yeah. above God. Man, I couldn't believe what I could not believe the story I was hearing. Wait, white women are plot they do, armor they for do. life. They do. They, they, yeah, <laughs> they they have plot armor against any accountability. Yeah. Who gets you out of this trouble? Okay, oh, yeah. a, a woman well, gets you this. into this trouble. Who gets you out? Dick, I have yeah. told, I have given all men the playbook on how to survive Me Too, and I said, take it from the black community during <laughs> dino-centric Jim Crow. When a okay. white woman could walk by and go, oh, my God, he was eyeballing me. He did yeah. something to me. And then all the simps came forward going, lynch him. We got to throw him in jail forever because he eyeballed a white woman. <laughs> okay, Dick, 60 years later, how do you get out of this? Watch this. Dick Masterson, he's a he's a misogynist. Oh, my God, he had an orgy, and he, he fisted me and then spat in my face. <clears throat> and then right as the, the, the swarm gets ready to come after you, right, with their pitchforks and torches, Right as they start piling up to kill you, Dick. You know what you do? You yeah. like this. Gotcha, bitch. <laughs> and you pull out a white woman, right? Okay. N just numerous white suitcase. women. You yeah. just pull her out of the suitcase, Charlie Sheen uh -huh. style, along with the, the briefcase of Coke, right? You yeah. pull this bitch out. And you know what happens, Dick? All what the allegations happened? go away. Right? Okay, watch a this. white woman? You need a white woman to... Because if the white woman is above God, and yeah. a white woman accuses you of something, or any woman... The only thing that gets you out of an accusation is a white woman. I see. You got to throw a white woman at them. You got to trump their maybe a whiter woman. Or a uh, whiter woman, like, like she's like, oh, no, no, no. Go, go to Ireland. Whiter than you. Get the whitest yeah. woman you could find. From from Scotland, one of the locks. Like you just have whatever kind of chick you can find. That's why Tiger Woods was fucked because his wife is so hot. He's like, fuck. There's no woman whiter than this. So, there's no I woman whiter than a Swede, right? <laughs> yeah. It's the same with you and Sean, right, Dick? Sometimes your pre-show yeah, is almost as long it. as the show. I, the intro has a way of changing things sometimes. I don't know why, but I've learned to just go like, ah, fuck it. <laughs> and people still get people get mad at it. They'll go like, oh, that cold open was a little too long. I'm like, man, it's like a song. Who cares where we put the song? <laughs> <laughs> well, I st I'm old enough to remember when you actually switched to cold opens. Yeah, yeah, show. yeah. Yeah, I thought it was cute. <laughs> that... Uh, I mean, I, I'm not ashamed to say that I, I've done cold opens on this show, too, because it's in, sometimes the pre-show banter is interesting, so you leave it in. I hope Anyways, so. Go ahead. Here we on. go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 63 of the Big Town Podcast, your only weekly source of the show where people as old as your parents are cooler than you. As usual, I'm producer Tim. <laughs> joining me is the mayor of Big Town, Drexel. Say hi. Hello, everybody. Also joining us, special guest into the uh, studio today, Mr. Dick Masterson. Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? I'm probably older than your parents, right? Than a lot of people's parents. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the guys in, the, in our Discord, you definitely might be. Uh, you know what, uh, Dick? I don't know about about you, but like I love talking to like the young bucks, right? Because like, you know what ends up happening? You and I can talk about our life experiences, and they're pretty much shared. Because if you're in the same age, we'd be like this: "Oh yeah, man, this is how it was in the '80s. Yeah. This is what's going on." So when someone goes, "Hey, what's happening right here, right now?" Right? You have an idea of what's going on, but it's it's from your perspective, right? right. You're older, you're established, you're doing your thing. You start talking to these these younger kids, right? You know, the, you know, <laughs> fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. As you go, so say like you know, later teens into their early to mid twenties, right? They will yeah. show you a whole different world, man. They're like, "Oh no, man! If you thought the holes were bad when you were coming up, Dick, let me show you how bad these holes are now. Let me show you how bad the simps are now." Oh man, look, dude, the, the kid. Look, uh, I was talking to J Love. They had a damn gun threat. I guess some chick, a girl, not even a boy this time, a girl was like, "Oh, oh yeah, I'm eating everybody in the school. <laughs> all school off. They got to call off the yeah. school. Like, like a girl, like." <laughs> Dude, like cool. before, it was always, <laughs> it, it was always the 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 horrible, weird kid in the back of the class who used to say, "I'm gonna eat everybody." Yeah, Just yeah. Wait, chicks. Hey, Drex, you're cool. Don't go to school tomorrow. Oh, dude, yeah, Dick. Let me ask you. Yeah, something. I mean, what? Well, wait, wait, what? What, what year did you graduate high school, Drex? Uh, oh one. 
Oh, wow. Okay, I'm 98. So when I was in high school, that was like the first, like, it just happened then. And it was like a, holy shit, this is like, this is in play now? You mean we could go, we could get a day off because they found yep. like a backpack in a trash can? All yep. right. This is, this is wild. This is like a brand new, you know, they were yep. they, like, they were running the Columbine shit um, all day. It was, uh, it was very exciting. It's kind of played out now, but uh, you sorry, I interrupted you. You know what's crazy though, Dick, is that like, do you remember when it became real when kids actually started going ape shit and just they went ham and started eating their classmates? You're like, oh, bro, you were that lonely? You were that mad? Like, like, <laughs> yeah. like do you remember when, when like teasing used to just be like a thing that people did, right? Like, it wasn't my thing. Like, I just never thought that was cool to like tease or bully people. But I'm like, I understood there are people out there who did do that kind of stuff. I'm like, how is your reaction? Yo, man, I gotta get these assault rifles. That's your reaction? Yeah. I I was watching I was watching that show Euphoria where it's in high school and it's it's really emo and bullshit but they're doing a lot of drugs and they're all having like soap opera relationships and there's a lot of bullying and I was thinking like where was there? I don't I don't re remember like when I remember drug use in high school it was like just people getting shit faced and crying and pissing in their pants like there wasn't all this weird identity shit i don't know if it's really like that or if that's just like a show for uh gen xers to like look at what they believe are teenage tits but I, is, is it really like that now where there's all kinds of bullying and crap like that i just kind of assumed it was a little bit of the news making shit up and then from, from what i've been been hearing really? it sounds like it's more it's not so much of that you know I, it's more I of the gender right. thing I bet you're right because it's all online. Like people are online. people are total assholes online, and mm -hmm. and sometimes it's their fucking parents running their yeah. accounts, being complete lunatics. I bet it is. I bet it is fucked uh, to be in high school these days because you're it, the absolute worst that you are is uh, online all the time, yep. interacting with your classmates, thinking that thinking that the internet's gonna forget this. Uh, Testing your water, testing your toes in the well. well that that's the also dick. that is that's what changed yeah. though. Well, yeah. Ultimately, here's what changed: when you and I were in school, right? And you, know, you graduated the same year as my brother, right? He graduated in '98. Yeah. There were some things. Uh, there was a back in '96. They uh, they took weed killer and put into the 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 grass at the high school. Uh, die yeah. in words '96, right? <laughs> yeah, I remember and, that. Yeah, we we did that too. Yeah, yeah. People were doing this yeah. kind of shit, and you know, it's like. But most things, I think, deep down back then, people knew if someone found out who you were that did it, you knew that you could face physical repercussions, right? Like if I, yeah. if I said, "Yeah, Dick Masters ain't shit. He's a bitch." You know what I'm saying? I fucked his mom. <laughs> if I say that, and then all of a sudden you find out, like, "Yo, yo, yo, Dick, yo, man, Drex was saying this." That's where the school fight came from, right? Someone yeah. said something behind someone's back, and then th there was a confrontation, right? Yeah. Where's the confrontation now with anonymity? You see what I'm saying? Anonymity yeah. has ruined getting punched in the fucking face. And facing consequences. <laughs> yeah, I don't really, I don't like getting punched in the face, but there is like people just people kind of shrivel up when they're even when they're just exchanging words uh, face to face, um, and we're just being having to say it to somebody or having to look at somebody reminds you of I don't know it reminds people of their humanity and they just naturally pump the brakes. Uh, yeah, well, Ty talked really about that with dueling. Uh, Ty, oh, yeah. Ty Beer talking really? about dueling. He said, uh, I guess like, there was like, a, it was an insane amount of, of cases that they settled it before there was an actual duel. Cause like, yeah. You know, if you say, yo, yo, dick, yeah. I'm going to eat you, bro. And then you're saying, I'm going <laughs> to eat you. You say that shit until you're actually standing there. You're like, yo, one of us could not make it home. Right. Like, oh, shit. This is actually happening. Whoa. Hey, dick. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, I kind of <laughs> think that with all the beefs that go on online, like, we should, like, as I, remember it or read about it dueling was like a way for guys to save face like it was yep. all just this this pageantry that they would go like that's it motherfucker time for a duel and then they would yep. both go out and pre and they had a, like explicit rules but they would always just shoot up yep. and uh that's why that's why alexander hamilton got shot in real life i didn't see the, the musical but aaron burr said nah fuck you and just <laughs> shot him uh, like he was, so he was expecting to just do one of those shoot in the air and let's save face things. But yep. Aaron Burr was not fucking around. Uh, I think we need, we should bring that back for all the Dude, beefing that's been happening I, I online. Want, listen, Dick, I am a huge advocate for people getting punched in the fucking face. I want kids getting their <laughs> yeah, asses. Yeah, but you're whooped. huge. <laughs> <laughs> Drexel, I'm made, my bones are made of glass. I don't want to. I don't want to fight anybody, man. I can't even walk my dog without breaking. 
I've broken like every bone in my fucking body. Oh, I don't want to get hit. Dude, I, so I've never got broken a bone. Osteoporosis. Yeah. yeah well, hey, hey, so, Dick, you've seen the movie Unbreakable, right? Yes, that's me. Yeah, so you're literally Mr. Glass. Yeah. Oh, fuck, man. <laughs> well, it's, well, well, Dick, before we got into the show proper, I was asking you about, you know, just the changes that you've seen in California. Like, yeah. what have you noticed that made you go like, holy shit, man, this place has really fucking changed since whenever I was younger? Uh, you know, it's like, um, I, I think that the feminists finally got, finally got society to uh, shun sex in general. Well, like, hold on. The, only for men. For women too. I'm gonna. Say, I agree with you, but I'm gonna say like all this. I'm gonna say a lot of this Me Too stuff that I see happening is that women don't feel like they could just brag about banging guys anymore. That it makes mm -hmm. them sluts. So they have to try to Me Too them because they want to brag. They want to tell everybody that they got like choke fucked by the Dodgers pitcher. But they're like, well, I can't just say that. Then everyone will call me a whore. So I'm gonna say he raped me. Of then, course. Then everyone knows that I'm so desirable I got choke fucked by the Dodgers guy, but this is like the etiquette of our times now. This is mm -hmm. the way I have to get that message out there. Um, that's That's been a big one. Do you worry uh, about that, Dick? Uh, have you ever talked to guys out in L.A. who are, you know, especially in the entertainment industry, like, yo, man, like, what is what is on the mind of guys like yourself and other guys who have, like, a higher profile about in terms of, like, the Me Too thing? I don't know. Pro probably. I don't know any of them. I don't know anyone who would be. I think I'm kind of a scumbag, and everyone I know is a, a scumbag. So but that's I like the known quantity of it. you, too, right? Like, people What's who that? meet you know that you're a scumbag. Yeah. It's not a surprise to anyone. Like, <laughs> yeah, someone could go on to some, someone could go on to Twitter and see, I, I met Dick Masterson. He was a fucking asshole. And everyone's like, Yeah. Yeah. You, you just found out today. I think, um, I think being. Like, so I knew, I, I know a couple guys who've been, uh, who've had their lives uh, ruined by Me Too's, um, even as early as like 2015, they were comedy guys, and not, not successful really, just working in improv and independent theaters, and uh, a crazy bitch told a tale, a couple crazy bitches told a tale and like uh, corroborated stories and then went on this, uh, went on this, um, a campaign of spreading the story around and the dude was he was drummed out of UCB uh, I think they even had like his picture on there like don't let this guy in wow. uh, they totally ruined his life and I think I believe that this stuff happens to guys and this sounds cruel but who are like average looking or below like in general yes yeah and it's so that's what makes it so sad is it's a bunch of fat pigs conspiring to bring down a guy who like probably uh i don't know needed that pussy like he wasn't swimming aziz, in it. aziz needed it uh do you remember that that uh bold.com story no woman would fuck aziz and sorry on his own merit right and yeah. least, if, if he was not a celebrity of any kind women would yeah. not walk into a bar go like this let me see which dick I'm gonna bounce on tonight, and they were like this: <laughs> not Dick Masterson, no. no, not not that NFL player, not that yeah. baseball player. Aziz, Aziz. That's the dick I, I want that little brown penis tonight. <laughs> dick, I can guarantee you, not one bitch in on in the history of ever has ever said that, man. Ever. Yeah, it, yeah, it's so sad. It's so sad that they need the warnings the most. Like the the guys who look like um, God, what was that guy's name? Army Army Hammer. Army Hammer. Yep how he like had a sex dungeon and did all kinds of wild shit You're like yeah you'll be fine even if this gets out people aren't gonna care but the guys who look like seth rogan like oh buddy you need to be real careful like these chicks are dude gonna if you're if you're seth rogan you need to have the nda have the lawyers that, look here's the thing oh. i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna tell you a new kink dick this is some real shit man new kink it's time for dudes to level up we're gonna start yeah. paying the cops to fuck in the police stations in the jail cells <laughs> <laughs> because here's the yeah. thing. So you have a witness, right? You're on camera going right. into a, a police station. And then, hey, Officer Smith, Officer Jones, record this shit. <laughs> Write this shit down, bitch, right there on the line. Because, because Dick, is there any other chance? Like, cause, uh, watch this. How could you get me too when you were at a jail fucking, right? Uh, yeah. You weren't forced. The cops were there. So they, they, you could have said stop at any point, And you could yeah. be like this. All right. Dick is out. Right? I, I pop the dick out, right? I'm clear, clear, I'm clear. I'm clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't go. I didn't do another thrust. What? Because what? 
what more than that can you really do? Because look, I have told guys on numerous occasions, I've said that the easiest pussy and the best pussy a man can get in the current year is married pussy, right? Because uh, you get all of the benefits without the drawbacks. <laughs> because at the end of the day, look, look, watch this, Dick. Yeah. Trex, he, he took advantage of me. Where did this happen, miss? Oh, he was in a hotel. Are you married? Uh, uh, what were you doing in a hotel with this dude? Right? Yeah. Why, why, were, you in a, why were you in a random Hilton? Right? <laughs> On, uh, and you called in sick from work. You, you see how the story doesn't add up, right? The hotel yeah, room yeah, didn't, yeah. Uh, didn't say Vic Mignogna, though. Well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Vic's problem was that it was a coworker. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. There's always there's always that level of like, oh, because these are people that are always around each other. When you are with just a rando, like, like oh yeah, this is some some you know cougar here that wants to get smashed, or this is some young fat who married a, a, a you know whatever dude, right? Some beta simp, and now she wants to get spit roasted. Okay, well, <laughs> Dick, the the camera clearly shows her, you, and me walk into the, the hotel at the same time. Oh, yeah. Right? We yeah. walk over, we go into the room. Right? So, so the camera shows us all going in the room together. What does that mean? Well, she wasn't by force. <laughs> it damn sure wasn't by force. So there you, you got to go, walk man. with your hands over your head, like back <laughs> up into the room. Yep. Push your, uh, yeah, put your hands in. You have her take your pants up. So, did Vic, did, it was Jamie, right? Jamie Markey. Did Vic the, not have sex with Monica her? Monica Rial was the. Oh, was Monica the one. Rial. I the always one thought the horse it was, face the teeth. Did he fuck her? So, uh, I mean, there's some probably not. Probably because okay, so that's what I I thought that the real problem was that he didn't fuck her. Yeah, that's, that's what like, I. That's my theory. The whole he thing seemed like. If he would have fucked her, she would be fine, and it would unscramble her fuck. Like, peep, women and men get this fucking wrong Tetris piece in their head that they could never clear. Like, ah, I didn't fuck, I didn't fuck that person, so I'm just gonna be like a fucking lunatic about it forever. Uh, I always I, thought that was what happened with those two. That he did. That usually fuck is her. the case, though. My prevailing it, theory yeah. on this was that uh, she made a move on him. He turned her down. He's like, I don't like you that way. Oh, and God. she held this grudge. This grudge, and then when she just held on to it, and then when all of this stuff came out, because remember, Monica was not yeah. the first accuser, right? Yeah. It was all the stuff that came out from Dragon Ball Super Broly. Then uh, she piled on and said, I've had this grudge for 20-some years, yeah, and yeah, now's my is. chance to get revenge. I'm still pissed that, that that's happening in like an industry where it's mostly male fans. Like, Can't we like trucker? Whatever company's doing this to Vic, can we get all the trucker guys in there and stop anime and blockade anime or some shit? Right. Like, come on, man. It's not enough. No uh, one, no one's look, man. I've always been telling these guys I hear, Dick, I said, no one is raping these hoes. And like when he, like you said, celebrity <laughs> no. is a major part of this. And you know, Dick, I want to ask you this. When it comes to celebrity, yeah. right? Yeah. What do you think about the changing meaning of celebrity, right? We're in this like this internet age, right? You could become a YouTube celebrity or a Twitch celebrity or whatever. And, yeah. you know, Ricky Gervais roasted these, you know, Hollywood elite types, right? And then, yeah. like, COVID itself also proved these people aren't very anything. They aren't, they aren't necessary to anyone's life. What do you think no. about the nature of celebrity over the last uh, two and a half years? There's, it's funny how they all were, like, super gung-ho about shutting Hollywood down for COVID. And I, I kind of thought, or I had this, like, suspicion that they were just really tired of being... Uh, narcissistic attention whore. Like, it must take a lot of work to be fake all the time and, like, always be failing and losing parts. To Like, Hollywood is fucking exhausting, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I figured they all just wanted a time out for as long as possible. Um, there's there's people there's people on platforms with, with millions, hundreds of millions of followers that I've just never even heard of. Um... I don't, I feel like we're in a, maybe you, guys like you and me are in this weird middle ground where I don't care about the Oscars and whatever people are famous there. And I also don't know who the fuck is famous that's coming up. Like, I, like I kind of don't know anybody. Isn't that uh, weird? Yeah. Well, well, All well, the did, people you know I know are funny? dying. Like, Hugh Hefner, dead. Alex dead. Trebek, dead. Like, I don't fucking know. I don't know the people coming up. I don't know the people going out. Um, It's, it's great. Uh, but well, it's you're weird. right. It, it is a middle ground. The reason why I say that, you know, I'm agreeing with you is because, like, I look at my my daughter and I look at like Nick's kids, right? Yeah. And if if I were to say, like, you know, 
there's Will Smith or there's, you know, uh, whoever, you know, Anne Hathaway, whatever, like Hollywood celebrity, like A-lister yeah. or something, right? That would mean nothing to them. They would look yeah. at me like, uh, okay. Like, first of all, how many Will Smith and Anne Hathaway movies have they probably seen, right? Yeah. Not many, if any um, at all, right? But if you told them PewDiePie is is standing in front of them, they would go ape shit, right? Like, oh my yeah. God, it's PewDiePie. They can recognize PewDiePie with a mask over his uh, face. Absolutely. Like, Even PewDiePie. I know it's, PewDiePie. It's, but that's what I'm saying. Like, like the, 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 the uh, people that my daughter has looked at, right? Like, I, they watch the most mindless shit ever, man. Kids will watch some <laughs> shit that's so mindless. Like, you're, you're, you're like appalled that something could be so brain dead, right? Yeah. But it's like, it matters to them. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, some goofy stream about, like, my daughter watched a girl called Azzyland, right? She had a 24 hour twerk video. Where she was upside down. To, I'm not, I can't make this shit up. And you know when someone says that, you think, like, oh, maybe they did a time lapse, right? No, no, no. No. The video is actually 24 hours, like like 11 seconds, right? And she just gets up on the Loot. wall. What's that? No, no, no. no. It, it's clearly her just sitting there doing her little ass jiggle. And I'm just okay. like, Jesus Christ. But, but I mean, uh, Tim. I mean, I watched say- Nick stream for 24 hours when he had, when he passed 24,000 followers. So, yeah. subscribers. <laughs> so, I can't criticize the 24 hour twerking. Oh, yeah. yeah we right. have to do it too. <laughs> well, Nick did that thought stream too on Twitch, right? Oh, he did the Twitch did not thought watch stream. That. <laughs> you, you, you missed nothing of value, sir. <laughs> Seeing Nick spread, I was like, I, I just, he bent over. I'm like, dude, I did not want to see that body, man. I People saw were, they were DMing me. I saw a picture of it, and I'm like, "Oh, I get it," but I also know that where this is going. I don't, I don't think <laughs> I get it. I've had bad jokes too. Usually, they weren't in front of so many people, but <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, you gotta stop. Well, you know, you know, uh, you know, we all have like the freedom to do all this crazy shit, which is is still fun. And yeah. you know, Dick, we were talking about the the convoy and all that stuff going on in Canada. Yeah. I got a question. You know, obviously, you know, when I met you uh, in the flesh back in December of 2020, you know, you were in. At that point, California had some very strict lockdowns, right? Whereas Ybor right. City was fucking wild and free, right? Oh, what does freedom mean to you after all this COVID shit? Uh, you know, I kind of got a, I don't know, doomer perspective on freedom. Um, I think the, I don't think there's ever going to be any going back. Like it's, nope. it's funny, it's funny to me to watch to watch people uh, clown on like California. Uh, like, oh, Dick, if you don't, if you wanted freedom, like, you could just leave California. And I'm like, um, like, I don't think you guys understand. This was a, this was a, a national transfer of power. Uh, mm-hmm. freedoms were taken from us during this that we don't even know we lost yet. Like, we're, we're still, we're still waiting for the government to tell us, like, how much more bread and wood costs. Uh, mm-hmm. we're, we're like kind of just, crossing our fingers and hoping that someone fixes the election by the next time. And I don't really, I don't see why they would. Uh, Mm -hmm. Now that Trump is gone, like it's back to just one party being in charge. Uh, Mm -hmm. I don't see any difference between Democrats and Republicans. And what I see is like this disaffected youth class of Republicans who are like wondering where, who think like, who like see Trump as their dad who went out for cigarettes during the last election, and they're like, oh, well, now what do we do? Now what do we do now that, I mean, we got to do something now that Trump's got, it's like, no, you're, you're fucked. Like, you don't remember how it was in, uh, 2000, 2004, 2008, 2004, like, it's, it's nothing. There's no, there's no choice. There's no hope. It's, it's nothing. They just, they just fuck you forever in new and yep. unique ways that you can't even imagine yet until you look at a graph in your sixties and go, oh, that's where all my money went. Yep. Um, I don't. I, I want to get back out and go to bars and stuff, but I don't, I think there's going to be like this level of shell shock and dysfunction as a whole, uh, that we're never going to recover from. So, uh, that's, that's what I think about freedom is, is fucking gone. Whatever this yeah, well, is, you just got to call it freedom. It, it, it's it. always about your new normal, right? Like, you know, they talk about yeah. how children are designed. Like the nature of a child is that whatever a child grows up in is their normal, right? They, they, yeah. They're born, and if you're born into a world-torn country in the Middle East, that's your normal, right? It's, sure. it's not good, it's not bad, it's just your normal. And then mm-hmm. you don't know what is normal or what is better or worse than your environment until what happens? Relativity, right? You, you go yeah. somewhere else and you go, wait a minute, and then you compare it to your, re- your reference point, right? 
shit, is this better than, than where I come from or is it worse than where I come from? Or is it the same, yeah. right? And you see this, like, like, I actually had this happen to me when I was coming up. Uh, you know, I was living out in the burbs with Nick and I played for the city team, right? When, when right. I played AAU ball. So my inner city teammates were always, you know, my, you know they were kind of, you know, you know, kind of like you know, shitting on me a little bit for like, oh, yeah, you're you're in the suburbs now. You're a suburb boy or whatever, right? Yeah. Hey, Dick. They said that shit until what happened? What changed? Uh, I don't know what. We had a tournament right in my won? backyard, oh, and okay. so we, we they came to the suburbs, right? Okay. And they're like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to leave. I said, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought the suburbs They've was so never lame. Seen the and, suburbs. Oh my god. So they've okay. never seen the suburbs. They just, they just had this, this preconceived notion of, oh, all those white people and blah blah blah. And then like, dude, I will never forget. We went to the mall. Oh my god. This was okay. the first time these dudes went to the mall and saw pretty white girls who didn't sound like 65-year-old dudes like most German shepherd bitches sound like, <laughs> with deep voices, <laughs> facial hair, talons for nails, yeah. weaves that are all burnt up and shit. So they finally around women that had good hygiene and nice teeth, oh. and they're like, oh, my God. This is, this is foreign to me, but I like it. And then what they realized they like, the suburbs was? Dude, what did they you'd be amazed, man. I don't know what they were thinking. Look, look. I was I, I had my uh my cousin you and I thought was, it was like Boston out. probably a bunch of fat white yeah, people Yeah, I don't know what they were expecting. Other. Dude, Dick, I started my car up, right? And I remember yeah. I started my car up and then went inside the house, right? And we're talking to my friend. My cousin's like, "Wait, you just, just leaving your car out there?" I'm like, "Dude, this is so, like the shit's not going to get stolen." <laughs> you look, I'm talking on the street as in start the car up, go back trot back inside, right? Yeah. Yeah. And go have like a full on conversation and blah blah blah. And everyone's normal. you know normal, just normal life. And then he's like looking at me like, dude, what the fuck? Yeah, this is the suburbs. It's great. Yeah, There's my no friend from my friend from Inglewood <clears throat> came up uh to my God, my I had a house in uh, up in Valencia in like two thousand four or something like that. And he did the same thing. He looks around and he goes, uh, oh, you don't have any bars on the windows? Yep. And I said, no. So I'm up a hill, man. Climb don't, uh, crime don't climb. And he goes, well, what about, uh, do you do you have like a, a piece in your room? And I said, no. And he goes, well, what do you do about creepers? I'm like, what the fuck is a creeper? Yeah. He goes, you know, like people who come up to your windows and just see, like take a look <laughs> inside to see if there's anything to steal. I'm like, buddy, oh, we don't have any creepers around yeah. around here maybe there's one creeper in this town i don't know that's an right. Inglewood thing the only creepers in minecraft yeah this was, this was way before know, minecraft uh, yeah that was fun. i was like you need to get well, out of here Dick, you need to get did out you ever of did you ever go to his place did you ever like okay leave, oh yeah leave your spot and go to his and then what was the reaction from the flip side oh well he it was a shithole it had like uh he had a four, one fourth in the address um, oh, there's guys. There's guys bench pressing in their front yards. You know, all around ah. the uh, the four foot t the uh, the three foot tall chain link fence. Yep, they have a lot of those. You're like they don't. Nobody has a three foot tall chain link fence in the suburbs. Uh, that's a that's a ghetto fence. That's a yeah, ghetto the hood. The hood fence. sucks. Like, like Dick. One of the things yeah. I want people to do is. You know, you can remember back in the 80s and 90s where people were honest. Like, if someone was a fat dude and they walked up and was like, yo, man, am I a fat dude? And the guy was like, yeah, dude, you're a fat yeah. ass. Like, you need to get in shape. Now mm -hmm. we got to worry about people's feelings. If you live in a shithole, like, dude, the ghetto is not cool. It's not fun. It's not sexy. It fucking sucks. No. Everything about it sucks. And we need to start telling people, this sucks. This is yeah. not something to aspire to be at. You know what I'm saying? It's weird that, like, uh, whatever rap music or uh, a poor ghetto black culture sold to white people has made it, like, romantic to be all poor and shit. Like, people will try to make themselves come from a poor background because yep. that is, like, that's valuable to middle class and rich white people when it, it mm -hmm. like, there's no, it, it doesn't make you any wiser because you grew up eating grass out of the, like it's not it's you, you know what i mean it's so weird that yeah. that happened but it totally happened in in my lifetime every politician does it drex every politician starts with how i grew up on a farm and my yeah. grandmama and my grandpa didn't have nothing they ate dirt. Well, they, they have to have they have to make themselves relatable because here's the thing if you if you were born with a silver spoon right let's say you're george yeah. w bush or just trudeau or trudeau like, like there are certain people if you're if you're born into the elite 
you have to try to come up with something, right? Because otherwise, people yeah. are like, I can't fucking relate to you. So the, one of the only guys in recent memory who basically showed up and never did the whole, like, my sob story, at, ironically enough, was Donald Trump. He's like, oh, yeah. you guys already know me. Like, I, I didn't grow up poor. Like, what do you want me to say? Even Trump said, oh, I got a small loan of a million dollars. Like, why do you got to tr- – come on, man. You got to call it – like, I get it. It's small for you, but what the yep. fuck? You're still trying to play that off like it was small? Yep. God, no one can do it. Yeah, uh, but, but, but Dick, you have to say that because this thing. What if yeah. Trump was like this? Yeah, you know, I was, I was, I was poor. To- you were poor? Like, because he, he can't say he was poor, right? <laughs> yeah. So he he was he went to a boarding school. So like, like, as you start to I see – Certain people, like, look, the, the uh, Obama girls, right? They can't go, you know, 10, 20 years from now talking about how, how hard their life was other than what? Identity politics, right? Yeah. yeah. So now the, the, the new thing to do is that, like, okay, shit, I wasn't poor, so what do I do? I was, I was a poor, I, I was a horrible uh, trans, black, Muslim, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, disabled. What, you know, you, you start checking all these boxes to, to make itself, you know, make you sound like... You know, you had it so hard. It's yeah. like, no, you didn't. Elizabeth Warren is the start of this phenomena. Oh, yeah. Where you're going to have the whitest person in the world go in and say, yeah, I'm black. Oh, God. Yeah, like it, it's King. coming. It's Sean such King. a white woman thing to do. Her whole, it like, is. cookbook, like, trying to make herself inch Because her and her whole coven of white bitches do that, right? Like, yeah, oh, I'm... Basic. I, yeah, here's my cookbook from our Chippewa ancestors or whatever, and they're all telling their fake stories to each other. Yep. It's just, it's funny that it got to such a level where the whole world has to see and go like, oh, that's really like disgusting that you you kind of oh, took well, it. And Dick, did it we on, like, used a to we used to mock level. that. Like back in the day, we used to mock yeah. people like this. Like yeah, and they were they were never taken seriously literally at all. And like and now people are like and th- th- I think that was one of the the main culture shocks, right? Like, did you ever look over your shoulder and go, wait? You- you taking these bitches seriously? Like, yeah. I, like, like it's kind of like what you said about about the the, uh, the Trevor Bauer thing. There was a time when if you got smashed and throat fucked by a pro athlete, yeah. And you know, uh, actually, no, you'd say like, yeah, you liked it. You're a slut. You like, we it. know. We all know you're a uh, slut. We all know. Yeah, yeah. We all know you're a hoe, right? Like, like own yeah. your hoedom. It, it, yeah. Actually, you know what, Dick? If we go backwards, right? The first time that we all were shocked that the words of a thought were taken seriously was Mike Tyson with Desiree Washington, right? Everyone That's looked like... true. You remember that? Like It was like ah. the first time where a dude was like, like a dude took the fall and everyone's like... And look, everyone's head women, was spinning. Like, wait, what like, happened to him? Like, wait, uh... uh, uh wait, hold on. Talk- let me get this straight. Mike Tyson, the heavyweight, the, the, the heavyweight champion of the world, or at that point, former heavyweight champion of the world. Okay, so, yeah. so Mike Tyson, you claim he did these things to you in a hotel room. However, you he picked you up at the Miss Black America pageant where you guys went to the hotel. Wait a minute. What time did you go to the hotel? Oh, two in the morning. So what were you doing there? Oh, uh, uh, I don't know. Were you knitting? Were you watching TV? There was no Netflix and chill. So what were you? Uh, yeah. um, HBO and chill? There Skinamax? was just porno. There was just Por- like, yeah, you just had, yeah. uh, do you remember hotel porn? Oh, Those yeah. were the good old days, man. Yeah. Hotel porn was epic. Uh, I'm not sorry, mom, for that bill that we racked up in Vegas back in ninety, I think seven, ninety six, ninety seven. Apologize, for mom, about that. Um, and, and and Dick, when Mike got convicted, everyone's like, "Wait a minute!" But but, bro, no sane person believes this story. How did he get convicted? That was a that, whole other story. But it's that like that was a big surprise. Remember like, that? Like, just, like, like, wait a minute, convicted. what? He got con- he got convicted. He got How? convicted. What do you mean on what? (laughs) Because he was in Indiana, right? Because he's in Indiana. He's a pugilist. So here you got this huge black guy who has a weird voice and he's scary. He's considered the baddest man on the planet. Next thing you know, he's he's in prison, right? Uh, Obviously, the defense and Don King, that's a whole other story. But it's like, Dick, there's this push that we keep seeing that's like it's tearing down more and more men in more and more ways, right? Like, look, they're me too and people from the grave. You, You know, you're like, uh, who was that that just got recently Me too um, Norm MacDonald. got Me too Wait, who was that? Yeah, Norm MacDonald, legendary Canadian yep. comedian. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was – that girl came out and said he, that he groped her. So, like, right on the it's day of his – It's some bullshit. Uh, like, well, oh, look, they, they came after Bob Fuck. Dylan. Uh, they, they, uh, they came after some other Hollywood actors. Uh, Bob Dylan, I think Bob Dylan's still alive. The allegation comes from 56 years ago. It was a 1965 allegation, and the allegation came forward in 2021. It's almost like, well, 
I don't know. Um, what do you want us to do with this, right? <laughs> yeah, there's oh, a lot the, of like, what do you come want on. us to do with this. Ron Jeremy. What happens if you get me too would by a guy? Because, no, no, Dick, you've been me too would by a guy. Oh, I did? The cuck. Did Maddox? Maddox, me too. How did I get me too? Was that not... Was that was the oh, rape yeah. apologist not a Me Too? Yeah, you know what? He also Maddox also said that girls at the comedy club also like privately came to him and said I, like he didn't say exactly what I did, but he he intimated that he had secret knowledge of like girls and I I mean I assume I assume he was just making it up um, or they were. Uh, it didn't stick, but that was definitely one of his claims that like, oh, no, 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 trust me. He's he didn't only get kicked out for what I did. He was also doing uh, something with uh, girls or something, but he would never he wouldn't be real specific about it. And he let it go quickly because I think court case. It, um, uh, that's no, like he, one of court, right? Like, like when, when a guy starts making these claims, it's uh, it's kind of like what happened to uh, Dave Portnoy, right? Like, that's our thumbnail that? for uh, yeah. the episode. <laughs> what is, where is it? It's, uh, I went live. It's up in the top corner there. Oh, that's classic. Oh, 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 I see it. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's classic. It? Dave Portnoy is great. He saved all our text messages, didn't he? The business yeah, yeah, well, advisor. Well, you know person? what, though? Dick, I have always told guys to, to keep receipts because I was like, look, no one is actually raping these hoes, right? Literally zero, right? It's close to 0%. 330 million people in America. No one's actually raping these hoes. They, they, they're all lying. Yeah. Uh, well, now I gotta ask you this though. So you know, when it, when it comes to you know, you're talking about Maddox, you gotta get the hose on signal as soon as possible. Like yeah. that's really, and they they know it and they hate it. But you gotta go right away. Like, bitch, you gotta get your ass. I'll text you on signal, and that's it. Yep. I'm not fucking texting you on Twitter or regular yeah. text. Yeah, or yeah, anything. No, no, yeah, you can't have that. Yeah, yeah, Facebook you gotta have message. It. Every time, every time it will fuck you. It's gotta be uh, signal now or nothing, and you gotta be strong. With these hoes, you can't let them get away from get away with that. You can't let no them get away with nothing. Yeah. Well, well, now here's my issue though. When it comes to like the Maddox situation that you had, right? Like, what do you think about just the nature of uh, you know, like when friends are competing for the same goals, especially when it, like that goal is a woman? It seems yeah. to always kind of have. It's like the nature of the betrayal, right? Like, because I know, uh, yeah. Like, I got the the basic story. Like, I guess, yeah, yeah. It was like it was it's your co-host that was dating a girl, and then like way later. Yeah. You dated that girl, and then like it was like the source of like a whole new level of yeah. uh, like a whole new layer of bullshit, right? Like, like, yeah, what do you like think about that? Like psychotic possessiveness uh, uh -huh. that went for like five years. I think uh, people in America have really weird and dysfunctional views of sex. Period. They do, and it comes out in so many ways. Uh, this being one of them. Like, there's the. I, I guess it's like it's like a steer like so. The, I mean, the Middle East we can all say has a fucked up view of sexuality and women, and it comes out in very bizarre ways, like ownership of women and covering them all up because their flesh would be too tantalizing for the men. Uh, but we have like a light version of that, and we all and we also have it on the other side too. Like we also have like the extremely liberated. Um, uh, European version that we have a weird relationship to, like compulsively trying to engage in it, like two extremes of uh, of repressed sexuality. Uh, and I, I think Maddox Maddox's whole jilted ex obsession um, was part of it because that guy has we that guy has weird sex hang ups. He always had. He would talk about them on the show like he didn't know that they were weird. Um, so what was I, something that that you that he said that you remember as being like like weird? Like made you kind of like look over like, huh, wait, what did you say? <sighs> oh, um, someone made a compilation. Oh, they did from the oh, old show, <laughs> wasn't it? Uh, Chris Strand, I think. Yeah, bags of sand. Where he's talking yeah, about fucking sand, so. pregnant chicks, and it's like you get two for one. I'm like, all right. Uh, uh. He would and he would describe sex stories like uh, I call my bed my pussy bed, and I was having sex with a chick in the ocean. But you you'd say like, what do you mean in the ocean? Be like, you know, just moving your hips, man. I'm like, no, I don't know. I don't know how to have sex <laughs> in the ocean like and that. And the doctor nurse texts. Oh God, I forgot about those. Oh my Dr. God. Nurse? <laughs> He sexted with this lunatic, and she sent me all his sex logs to make fun of. And oh, they Jesus. were like, 
It was like a 13 year old sexting for the first time with a oh. with a 40 year old uh, woman. So oh. it was, it was also in third person. That was the weird part. Wait, right? what? Yeah. It was, it was like I, I I put the hand on the neck hair or something. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what? That's right. <laughs> oh God! And he said like be too horny if she's like oh yeah you you well you'd be good if I was there and you go I he said I would be too horny not to pounce. Uh, I would put I would put that my hand on the neck hair or something like that. Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> was, well, now, I gotta up. ask you, man. How did you even link up with this weirdo, man? Because at some point, you, you the weirdness had to come through, right? You would have like, looked over and been like, bruh. Yeah, I mean, I got a lot of weird friends. Like, that's, <laughs> like, all right, whatever. That's the territory. Yeah, You're right, I guess. You're a fucking freak, whatever. Uh, we had the same editor for our books. We met that way, and then we did a bunch of comedy stuff together. We're good. We're good at making comedy. We're not mm -hmm. good at the uh, any of the other parts. Biggest problem uh, was a very successful show by all <laughs> objective measures. Yeah, it yeah, worked. It, was. Yeah. it worked. You guys, you guys were because um, it doesn't work when you have two of the similar personalities, right? Just like yeah. uh, the reboot with Vito, like it wouldn't work if you had another Dick Masters in there. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a confrontational show. Sorry, I keep ducking down. I'm trying to adjust this boot on my foot. It's fucking killing me. <laughs> you break your foot? <laughs> yeah, I broke my foot uh, oh, about 20 shit. hours before I was supposed to go to Portugal two weeks ago. So you know, it's funny because I was like, "Hey, Dick, do you want to come on to our show?" And he's like, "No, I'm going to be in Portugal that week." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I and broke then, my foot. So I've been. What were you doing? Uh, you know what? I just stepped down a curb. Like I, I oh. stepped, I stepped to the side. I rolled my, I rolled my ankle, and then it, it. Uh, it I, you You're know, literally Mr. Glass. Sickening. Yeah, I heard that I sickening mean, crack. Oh, I didn't know you didn't know that. Yeah, th I heard that crack, and I'm like, oh, it's broken. I know right oh, away. I heard that crack oh, a million times. Oh shit! It's fucking broken. Fuck. All right. Fuck. You fucking peanut brittle over here. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> well, anyway. you, you know what though. Dick, you're talking about like some of the the weirdos on the internet, right? And like I remember yeah. when uh, I first technically met you before we met in the flesh was during Nick's show, and oh, we had God. that weird PPP stream, <laughs> oh, and it, the, the total shitstorm, right? Yeah, and I had too much I, to drink that night. <laughs> it, well, well, you know, it usually kills me, man. You know, I, I've I've made this point in my own Discord server where I said. I want your take on this. What do you think yeah. about this proliferation of, of men, especially young men, just spending way too much time on the internet, man? Yeah. You know, it um I think there's there's like the there's like the obvious causes of this, right? Which is just it's easy and it's fun and it's uh like it, it's easy to get your dopamine fix by going online and just like refreshing Twitter all day or being on Discord. Um, but it it does, and it obviously fucks up your brain, right? Like it fucks up your attention span, and it's hard to get dopamine anywhere else. Um, but I think I think overall, um, the men and women have been kind of disincentivized to want to seek each other out because. There's no money in America. Like it used to be a huge a wealth and uh, wealth generation uh, and getting money used to be a huge driver for men and a huge driver for women to seek out men. And mm -hmm. through various uh, government, um, government and banks, I blame entirely um, uh, the explosion of like debt for for. Uh, you know the the uh, the um, absorption of small businesses and main street businesses by venture capitalism and like gigantic corporations has made it so hard for men to feel like they want to go get a job, and that's not just like showing up at a box factory and and uh, taking what the robot gives you and shoves away and um by extension has made women like totally uninterested in men um i i think that are, are you trying to see it from both sides because like uh, oh, here's what i'm seeing yeah i'm seeing a lot of dudes look at the current crop of women and be like either they say no yeah or they say yes but the women are saying no or they're like well i'll just use them for recreation and yeah. then on the women's side you're kind of seeing the same thing women are like i don't need no man i just need some good d every now and then because yeah. you know i'm a boss ass bitch or they're like yeah well, i really want to get married so so both sides are kind of like no one no one under the, six the, feet 
Yeah. Well, here's the thing, though. There, there's no exchange. So, Dick, I was talking about this before the show. If both sides are saying the same thing, right? If, if the men say, okay, I'm the provider, so I got a house, I got a car, I got a decent job, I do blah, blah, blah. And then the woman's going, well, I got my own house, my own car. It's like, okay, so, but you're saying that you want marriage and kids. So how's right. that supposed to work if both people are basically, they're bringing to the table the same thing. So the guy goes, oh, okay, so you don't want to give up what you're doing. Okay, I'll stay home with the kids. Well, no, 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 you got to go work yeah. and support me. <laughs> hey, well, which one is it, right? Like, yeah, we're, we're at this weird point where like, no one, okay, everyone says they want something, right? right? But like you said, because of the dopamine hit, you're starting to notice people discard each other after one little thing, right? Because there's Dick, no you point. One argument. There's, there's no, no point. Right? There's like, no point in not doing it. Like, there's no difference. I mean, and let's not forget, like, the diet of people. There were People are just getting fucking enormous. Over the pandemic, people added, like, 50 pounds. Yeah, uh, man, on average, uh, it's like, bad. This is not, like, this is nothing... Uh, Dating is supposed to be a little bit competitive, but where is the? What are you competing for here? Uh, well, I mean, it's very look, bad. The, the it's funny you say that because uh, there's a, a question from our man Shaft, uh, our bodybuilding expert. Yeah, and he asked the question of uh, he was saying, "Yo, Dick, what's the important uh, the importance of physical activity, physical fitness uh, in men's mental health uh, oh, yeah. and general well being? What do you think about that?" I mean, I th I think uh, I'm not like a brain doctor, but I don't think your your mind can function if you're not exercising a lot. Like your your brain's your brain is working at at what it's tuned to do. If you're running like ten miles a day, chasing food until it dies from a heart attack, like that's what you're supposed to be doing. So anything less than that is. Like you got it, you know. You if you if you put like a high energy dog inside the house all day and never take it and run, it's gonna have behavioral problems. It's gonna like start mm -hmm. having compulsive uh, issues. And I think we're all suffering from that. Like I don't, I, and I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go out and do all the running because I can't. Because every joint is uh, failing uh, all the time. But <laughs> you got to do. You got to do. You have to do something. You have to do something, well, whether it's even just get out of bed and walk around, do some pull-ups. Like, you got to do something every day. Well, Dick, you talked about competition, right? And I think yeah. one of the things that we need to really push on both sexes, right? And obviously, you know, from the male perspective, because I mean, women won't listen to anything men say because they're going to no. call it mansplaining because they're taught to hate <laughs> men from elementary, right? This is what we need to start really preaching. The first competitor is in the mirror, right? You got to compete against yourself. Like, you know, someone posted, I think Shaft posted a picture of you. Uh, in your, I'm assuming you're like your lifting days or whatever, right? Oh, you're, me? You're, Where you're, is you're this? Version of you. Where can I look? Uh, it was in the Tyrone uh, text. Tyrone, Tyrone, Tyrone text. Tyrone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you look pretty buff in that picture, man. Let me and see. Is that him, though? Yeah, it's him. him. I'm looking at Mike Tyson now. That's not me. Nah, Hold on. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scroll up. Oh, you took it down? Oh, with that no. Mr. T hairdo? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's me. At, uh, at 830. Yeah. yeah, it's you. Yeah. It's the face at 830. <laughs> and here's the thing, though. So, so Dick, you you and I both know when you go into a gym, oh, you're man. wanting to go lift, right? Yeah. You're competing against yourself first, kind of like in golf. Like, yeah. you're competing against yourself and the golf course. Yeah. So when you went to the gym, right, you're taking this picture. You got a Mr. T hammer around your neck and everything, right? You're feeling good. Uh -huh. But when you went to the gym that day, you weren't trying to say, I'm going to be the biggest guy on earth because deep down you kind of knew that's not realistic. I'm just – you're competing against yourself. Right? Dude, I'm like I, I have uh, my 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 mental state goes down precipitously when I'm injured because I get injured mm -hmm. all the time. I'm always laid up. And I can't work out, and I, I so I go from working out five to six times a week to zero times a week, and like yep. I just start being twitchy and crazy. Uh, but to answer your question, yeah, yeah, definitely. You, you, it's uh, it teaches you to focus on yourself for sure. Um, well, you, you have you can't to because like, with anybody else, you just can't. You can't, and, and, and we okay. So one of the thing, the the things that I've noticed, like in this modern culture, right, is that everyone's out here fucking pocket watching, checking how many followers someone has. I'm like, dude, it won't matter because there's, be, there's gonna be someone else in the world who has more than you, right? Yeah, more money, more women, more status, whatever it is that you're seeking that you covet so much. Yeah, someone out there has more. So what's the point of going this, Dick? Dick Masterson has has X amount of blood. Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? Because you, you'll be miserable forever. So it's like your well-being is like this. Am I the best version of myself? Am I happy? Like, you know, Dick, you're out in, in California, man. I've been out to that place many times. And I will say this. I've Of all the places I've been, I would say California might rank in, in the upper uh, place I've been in terms of amount of unhappy people, right? Just deeply unhappy. Have you kind of gotten that vibe?
Well, because you know we get like, all the facade. we get all the most insane uh, uh, attention whores from the whole country come over here. Like nobody's going to Bend, Oregon because they're because they're trying to replace a dad they don't have with uh, with uh, millions of mindless fans. We get we get all the we get all the the celebrities, but for every celebrity we have here, we got a mil we got about a million people who did not get famous. So they're yep. just like seething with uh uselessness and uh envy uh well, yeah, and the envy is really deep because like they you know it, it's a uh, it's one of those things like you saw especially like in the music industry right and yeah. it happens with actors too where like they're always saying that they're better than whoever is famous right yeah. they only got on because of this reason because of blah, blah 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 and it's like okay well why don't you just go do that same thing and maybe you'll get the same result but they don't want to you know whatever sacrifice that may be they don't want to do that and oh someone did uh uh you <laughs> asked a question would you date one of these waifu yander ass girls? What's it? Uh, that would be willing. I, I don't know what, what he's referring to. There's, I guess, some yan anime yandir. Yandiri is that the one where they uh, where they're like psychotically obsessed with you? Yeah, yeah they're killing, yeah, yeah, like the, the competition. Yeah, yeah, they, they uh, eat your competition, bro. I think I've only dated that girl. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's isn't that eating the competition? Isn't that the default state of any? dateable material woman well there's no other kind like if there's another kind they're lying what do you what do you mean yeah, right? what yeah, do you mean say, would you default. date a a, a a competitive a psychotically competitive woman yeah they're they're crazy they keep it hidden from you but it's in there i bet, I bet drex has dated a psychotically <laughs> competitive woman and well, you haven't they're, dated they're all... since what like you were 20 the last time i dated i was uh officially dated officially Oh. Would have been 2007. And that was my child's mother. After that, the closest thing to like an actual, like you could say, someone you're involved with was my uh, my friend's sister. And that was 2017. And well, the thing is, though, is like the incentives to date dissipated. And, and Dick, I want your take on that. You can remember being a young man. And there was like reasons yeah. to date, right? Yeah, this is before yeah, yeah. there were there was you know dating apps, and you could just get easy peace sleeves thrown at you. Like you had to work for like everything, right? Like you had to work for for attention, whatever it is that you wanted in life, you had to do some kind of work for, right? There was like girls couldn't bust it open on OnlyFans and get paid by simps in '97. You see what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Um, like you had to do something. I I I gotta be honest with you. I when the apps came out. Uh, I am dog shit at them. I don't know why, but I, it was just like nothing. Like I'm so much better. Maybe I'm so ugly that my personality is not there to win women over. Or my conniving manipulation is not there to win them over over an app. But those goddamn things for me were were totally worthless. I much prefer um, meeting anyone meeting anyone face to face. Um, yeah, well, look, that was, you know, I was I was talking about this with my girl, J-Love, and we were talking about these socially awkward weirdos of today. And I said, Dick, do you remember going to the malls back back in the 90s? Oh, you yeah. The game right then and there, right? Like, yeah. I remember talking to girls right there in their face. Like, like it, was, it was none of this fucking <laughs> great. texting or something. Like, you had to, <laughs> hey, Dick, you, you like the way that girl looks, right? And yeah. usually you had, you had someone in your crew who was a fucking lame, who was like, I bet you won't talk to her. I bet you won't talk to that hot Asian girl at Osaka. Yeah. Okay, you see what I'm saying? Like you're in the food court, you just walked up and talked to her. I, the the worst it's thing weird that now. It's weird rejected. now if you do that because of all oh, these yeah, other you, you goddamn things. Oh, you'll uh, get OC you get... sprayed if you try that now. <laughs> oh man, yeah, don't don't do it, man. And it, well, the 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 disconnect, right? The 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 intergender disconnect is starting to affect lots of other aspects, right? Like yeah, you know, I remember when you were on Doctor Phil. And that uh, that old hag kept following you because you didn't give her attention, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. And you know what? Did, what was your takeaway from just that whole thing, the whole Doctor Phil uh, experience? Oh shit! Uh, I I feel like that was the last, like that was the la end of the end of like cable reality TV, because um, th that was like the internet kind of swallowing it up and uh, uh, finally asserting itself. I don't know, the the Doctor Phil thing. The weirdest part was uh, how how staged it is and how scripted it is. I guess, mm -hmm. which was a lot of fun to see. And I think that's that's probably what I talk about most about it is how many uh, how many cameras are on you at at the same time and the ways they the ways they force they manipulate you into saying what they want you to say by 
recording you in the open, but making it look close, like recording you behind a, a curtain so everybody in the uh, in the house can hear you and asking you shitty questions about them when they want you to say something nice, and then taking huh? you out somewhere remote when they want you to say something shitty, like something honest. Uh, that was really weird. The, and the people there are uh, just bonkers like the people there really? were really the people there were really all of them had been begged by their psychiatrists not to go in it was a real it was a really oh. it was a really fucked up environment um, holy shit yeah yeah it <laughs> was really it gets funnier every year uh, oh shit but it's not it's not a it's not a good thing what they do uh-huh. on that show and it continues to be yeah, uh, I've got a kind of a follow-up question to that. Do you sure. think that the Dr. Phil dick and the dick show dick have become two separate personalities of yourself? Um, probably. I don't I don't know. I could do the old I could do the old stuff still. If I call into the radio stations, I'll usually whip it out. If I'm trying to piss people off, yeah. It's really easy, but I like that's the whole that's the whole character, I guess you want to call it. Like I just really like winding people up. Um, no matter what it is, there's always going to be, there's always going to be people with sticks up their asses that you can really easily wind up. And it was, uh, I mean, fat women, it's always, always going to be women. Women are always going to be big targets. Always. Especially the always. fat ones. They're going to be even bigger to wind up and they can, and they're easy to, they're easy to wind up easily too. Uh, but I, I, I don't know. I think that's, I think that's probably more the real me than anything else. Like, Anytime I'm not trying to fuck with people and wind them up, that's me playing a character, uh, <laughs> which you have to do to get along with people. But it's just well, Dick, so what was your inspiration to create the Dick Show? So, so long ago, there was no such thing as a Dick Show, and then at some point, you came up with the idea, right? I sp- spied, then- yeah, spiting Maddox, uh, <laughs> yeah. pretty much. When Maddox canceled the show and he found out me and his ex were dating, uh, I think Sean actually called me up and said that we should do a, we should do a show. Um, I said, yeah, sure. Why not? I mean, the biggest problem wasn't going for that long. It was only going for like two years. And I figured I would just go back to not doing anything again. Like I did mm-hmm. before the biggest problem, but Sean said he was down. So we went for it. Uh, Sean did not tell me that Maddox was also doing a show. And I think once I found out about that, it became like a fun kind of radio rivalry to get into it. So it was like a... So it didn't matter if it was good. It didn't matter if I was doing something good anymore or if people liked it. All that mattered is that we're in like a race. Uh, and uh-huh. that made it that made it more fun than that made it more fun than anything else could possibly be. So if it wasn't I for that, imagine. I probably just would have quit. So like, ah, who cares? It was a one sided race, though, because except for the rape list and the lawsuit, like he he never clapped back at you on air. No, he just told all of his guests not to go on my show. Like, told all of our comedian friends not to do it, and fucking all kinds of shady horse shit. Yeah, it was yeah, never. He'd go into other, like he'd call into other people's show Drex, and he would tell them ahead of time. Okay, here's the list of words you can't say to me. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? Like, like all of yes. his celebrity friends, he would tell them, "Don't talk about Dick. Like, don't have him on your show." Uh, and I'll come on your show and blah, 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 blah. Oh, real. this dude is bitch made, man. I know. Well, <laughs> the, well, <laughs> well, well, Dick, you know, there was a time, there was a, there was a very particular man who had a great run out in your area named Tom Likas. I God, I and, love Tom. I mean, he was great. He was, cause he was, he, you remember, yeah. he really used to troll old bitches and fat bitches, right? Yeah. <laughs> on his show, he trolled him, and, and so so he was. Like they're a fucking a nightmare. They're ruining everything all the time. They ruin everything. They ruin they, everything. They're ruining everything. Ruin everyone else. They're gonna ruin everything. And anyone who's got kids out there, fat chicks are gonna ruin their life too. They never fucking stop. Never. Never. Uh, Especially okay. if they have small tits. Like if, if oh. you if, if you have a, a fat chick with small tits is the worst thing that you can ever endure in life. Especially <laughs> yeah. if she's dark skinned. A dark skinned, <laughs> uh, fat bitch. With no tits. Uh huh. And um, Lizzo. You're describing Lizzo. Lizzo. Yeah, yeah. Basically, Lizzo. <laughs> she's going to bring down everything and everybody with yeah. her. Right? Like she, she, she's like, uh, you know, it's going to collapse it, everything around. You know, we're all orbiting Lizzo, right? And she'll just become more you're and more massive. Like Christ. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, like, like the Stay Puffed Man, right? And she's going <laughs> to collapse into herself like a fucking neutron star, right? Yeah. And we all just go, like, no. And we get sucked in. <laughs> and it's like, but but Dick, you remember Lycus 101 and all those things. 
Oh, he yeah. was telling guys what to do, right? Yeah. And there were guys that would call in. And one of the things that I always found striking about uh, Lycus is that, you know, everyone on the West Coast is listening to him because he had the number one show. It was like, guys truly didn't know that this stuff was true. He's like, no, just do what I tell you to do. But Tom, my parents told me this. I don't care what your parents told you. <laughs> do so this. Crazy. And then do you remember they would call back, Dick? And they would go yeah. like this. Tom, all that shit worked. <laughs> Oh, Those okay. calls were so funny. Like, Tom, get more ass than a toilet seat because it's stuff you taught me. And I and I would be like 16 listening to this in my yep. truck going like, yep. why did you, how did you not know this already? How like, did how did know? you not figure that, this out? That you just uh, don't hang on everything they say and they're like, oh, man, your, your mom really fucked you up. Like, that's where you could really see it. Listening to guy yeah. after guy, like, oh, single mom. Like, man, single mom. something keeps something keeps coming up with these guys who don't know how to deal with women. It's, uh, keeps com- it keeps being said. Well, well, you know, oh, though, yeah, when, Dre. When you're, oh, what's that, Tim? <laughs> oh, yeah, Dick. Uh, preach to the black guy about single motherhood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's awful. It, it, look, the, the well, black Jesse Lee are, Peterson are says terrible. it now. Right, like Jesse Lee Peterson's yep. kind of like the new Tom Likas. With yeah, it's like yeah. It, it's so easy to get it right. And, and and one of the things is though is like Dick, these bitch made simp's raised by single moms, right? Yeah. They they always self censor, right? Because like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to hurt the woman's feelings. I'm like, <laughs> dude, look at what they respond to, right? Like like I'll give you a prime example. Guys used to have a a point way back when, once upon a time, where they openly talked about things that they liked and disliked. So you and I can talk about something that we love, right? We used to talk about old old action movies, right? Old horror yeah. movies. Don't you miss tits in action movies and horror movies, Dick? Oh, Don't dude. You miss that? Yeah, that's like one of my most. That's like one of my biggest gripes is the like lack of R rated movies, lack of just a big set of tits. And it's so bad yep. I can remember all of them from when I was a teenager because there's not any new. Fuck, I was. I mean, uh, that stupid Euphoria show. The best part of season one was in that when that uh, blonde gets your big tits out. I'm like, oh my fucking god, I can't believe they actually showed them. It's a whole show full of soft dicks and wieners wiggling around and five seconds really? of tits. It's like fucking hallelujah. Worth it though. Oh. Tits are huge. The tits are oh, rocking, really? but fuck, man. Only one what, little what? glimpse of them. Well, Dick, we used to we okay. We used to watch movies back in the day, man. We knew when we saw a Playboy playmate in an action movie, you yeah. knew what time it was, right? <laughs> like when you watch Under Siege, the yeah. original, yeah. you knew what time it was, right? And when you saw her come out of that cake, you went, "Oh Lord Jesus!" Yeah. Uh, Cindy Crawford in Fair Game. No one wanted to watch Fair Game with Cindy Crawford and one of the fucking Baldwins. But why did you why did you rent it from the your rental store? The goddamn tits. You want to see your tits. Well, now it's also like I don't know. There's a weird thing about them getting naked now. It's like oh well, that was in there. Con- now it's all like about the power differential, and they're being forced to do this. Like uh, what the fuck? It used to be like so. Uh, I was talking to Ralph about this in Vegas. Like the whole idea of like wet T-shirt contests are even gone. Uh, some guy told us that they did a the a dry T-shirt contest. What? At his at his club or at his at something he had, they did a dry T-shirt contest. I'm like, man, that's like, it's that's so warped and backwards. Like, first of all, that's just like regular life is a dry T-shirt contest. Like, you don't got to be. Yeah. So, to be well, first of all, thing. what was the contest then? Yeah, but uh, but it was like there's this there's this uh, there's this element of objectification that has been totally shamed out of society, such that we have to pretend that it doesn't even exist. But now we don't get to enjoy it at all. Like the women who want to show off in that wet t-shirt contest don't get to do it fuck uh, that yeah, listen it, no, i'm so gonna tell all you bitches right now show your tits <laughs> off right here on the midtown podcast show your tits to the dick show dick long before he was a fucking exposed as a bitch made beta cuck sent mangina we had uh what's his face the guy who was with adam carolla uh jimmy kimmel was on the man show right yeah the man show needs to be brought back in a different format now here yeah. on the interwebs because if they can have nude yoga dick <laughs> That's our key to having bad bitches be naked on the internet, right? We go yeah. to the nude yoga segment, right? And yeah. hey, guys, time for your, your daily fitness check. Nude fucking yoga. Hit it, ladies, and let some bad bitches get oil. And we can, Dick, I'm going to hand you like this. I'm yeah. going to hand you the super soaker, right? Huh. Filled with oil, warm oil. <laughs> Put it in. Load it up and start squirting them on them, right? And yeah. let them just do their yoga while getting oiled up. I like it. This, uh, this, somehow this is I think we're, we're not going to make it if we do that. That's that would be the it. end of us. I mean, they'll just oh, no, wipe man. us I'll... off. Like it's too it's too sex negative coming from us. I, women could sit in a hot tub 
and like yep. make out with dogs on Twitch and suck off yep. a microphone. Did you see that chick today? Yeah, Amaranth. We, yeah. Oh, Jesus. They could be 500 pounds laying on a, a piece of cardboard in their new mm-hmm. sports bra, uh, and they could sell that, but like, God forbid a guy do a little wet t shirt contest. Dude, uh, we're, we're, look, look, there's a world twerking championship. Uh, uh, here's what's crazy. Do you know who told me about this? Of course, it was a woman, right? Yeah, sure. Because they know I have a, you know, I'm a, I'm an ass connoisseur. So she okay. comes to me, she goes, Drex, I found out what you know what you were meant for in life, and she sends me the link. Dick, do they have judges? They do. It, it was beautiful. <laughs> I'm, Dick, I'm not joking. <laughs> this was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my oh, life. Really? It was a, literally a world twerk championship. Okay, I'll check it out. It huh. is amazing. How? And I was like, like, like I want guys to get back. Are there regionals? Thing. Are there? No, no, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. There, there's regions because there's, okay. there was one in, I want to say, like the UK. There was one in South Beach, oh, the Florida. UK. Like, okay. <laughs> so, so yeah, remember, fat asses are everywhere now, yeah. right? I mean, there, there's yeah. nowhere you can go where you can say, like, oh, the girls are all flat backs out there. Oh, no. The, these asses are everywhere. Yeah. So, girls have stepped their ass game up, right? I want guys to be what they used to be, which is unapologetically masculine. Because, Dick, one thing I love about your state is that when I go in there, I know it's open season because all there are is a bunch of beta cucks, right? Yeah, that's true. These guys who are soy boys, right? Look, did you know that cuck porn is the number one search porn in your state? Is that true? Yeah, yeah, I I know in L.A. it is. Yeah, yeah. Tim, we did the the research, right? Yep, the article. Cuck porn. That's where you guys are at. I can't Fuck believe that it exists. I can't believe that it exists, number one, but that it's the most searched. That is just, that's yep. crazy. Cuck porn in California, bro. And look, Dick, when you go out every day, right? Yeah. What do you see in California? What kind of guys do you see? Do you see strong, masculine dudes? No. 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 Um, no. no, I don't. And by the way, the only strong, masculine dudes you see are on the down low, right? Like you go down to a lot of down low dudes. Pump and iron, they're they're fucking each other. <laughs> it's, I mean, well, this is the point that we've gotten to. Is that like, here's the thing? It goes back to what Dick was saying about the the very nature of what is promoted and what is uh, idolized in, in our general culture, right? Yeah. Women's sexuality, good, right? Like I said, body positivity. Body positivity is not for dudes, right? They don't want fat dudes. Ew, gross, right? Yeah. So, but but when Lizzo gets out there, oh, yes, slay, slay queen. See? I don't even know if that's sexuality either. I'm trying to put myself in them. I'm trying to put myself in any of their minds, which is very difficult to do. Okay, but like, pretend that, to pretend you're a chubby chaser. Oh, a chubby you chaser. Okay, pretend you're a chubby chaser as a dude. That's easier to you do. Would, you would see Lizzo, and you'd be like, dude, I gotta get that. <laughs> I gotta get me some of that, dude. I gotta, I gotta go ahead and lick every roll. Even the piece is big. <laughs> yeah, it just it, it, that's like. Look, you remember uh, Tess Holiday was eaten from the center of the cake in that oh, Cosmopolitan God. article, right? I don't know that that woman is so fuck. I feel like about her. Like the way like the Christian moms must have felt about Jerry Springer back in the nineties. Like I find her yeah. so I find her to be such an affront on decency and my sensibilities. <laughs> and I don't understand why I don't understand why she has a platform and I think she's leading to the degradation of society. Uh, well, you know, don't you, you ever find it funny that like you can be a libertarian, but there's, there's like certain people or certain movements that make you go, "Whoa, hold up!" Yeah, like, no, like, no, like, no, you, no, no matter how libertarian you are, you see Tess and you're like, and go, "Yeah, girls, go out there and eat from eat from the center of the cake." And you're like, "Uh, yeah." I uh, feel like like I hate like I I hate Republicans, but but I really fucking hate liberals. Do you know what I mean? Like I feel like that's it's so many times I'm like, man, Republicans are really grating on me. It's really fucking annoying what you're doing, but then a liberal will say something, and I think, man, I fucking hate you. <laughs> like, whatever. Well, what's it like being in California <laughs> surrounded by them? I don't. What's yeah, that like? Um, it's so I've got like. Desmond is amazing. I've I got mean, like three signs on my street of like your sign. This is a house of like science and Black Lives Matters and shit uh, like that. I don't think there's even any black people on my street. Like, I don't think uh, there's a single black guy on my street. Uh, but, but we're very pro Black Lives Matter. I got Bernie Bernie bumper stickers from 2016. I think of there's course. only one Trump uh, flag in the whole neighborhood. Like in the whole mountain, there's only That's one. That's a brave person. Yeah, he really well, is. He's got a big duel. Well, well Dick, uh, you're, like, you're addressing the stuff, right? Well, well yeah, yeah. You, you don't want to get your shit burned down, right? You don't want 1992 to happen again with the LA riots. And, yeah. and Dick, here's the thing. 
the stuff that you're referring to, right? In the front you, uh, front lawn, all this, that, and the other. You're you're getting to an issue of social credit, and something that I know that you're very passionate about is talking about the nature of you know social credit and financial cancel culture. And you've talked about this on Nick's show, like the payment processors and shit, yeah. right? The yeah. real cancel culture. Like, oh yeah. no, Dick, we're going to make sure that you can't even bank on earth anymore if we so choose to, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What do you think about that? Well, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say in the context of like the honking that just happening, that just happened, uh, seeing them, seeing conservatives use these platforms over and over and still not get that like the 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 power structure behind them fundamentally fucking hates them drives me crazy like seeing conservatives they're like here you go here's the GoFundMe like no bro the whole the whole system that made that from the VC from the banks banks to the VCs on down fucking hates you and they will uh-huh. just remove it like they'll just remo- it doesn't matter what you're doing they'll just they'll just remove it because like you don't like uh stop being cute they know that you're trying to force them to do stuff they don't want to do and they will fuck you over because they don't like they don't follow the rules like you guys think like you guys need to uh to, to, and then to see them to go from the GoFundMe over to give send go I'm like what are you what are you doing like it's the same you're moving it to the same fucking it's it's like a shell game like you're moving it to a different room in the same house uh, yep. you've got I, honestly, to give a little bit more effort, learn, learn how to use crypto, spend five minutes doing it, tell five of your friends, like, you have there, there to. is the, the, now, now, hold on now, there yeah. was the, I think it's like, was it uh 60 million that, uh, they, tr- they tried to withhold and then I guess they're getting zapped every, every transaction, right, Tim? Who's that? Cause uh, it's, tr- it's uh, the, uh, go find me. So, go um, find me. Yeah. Char- uh, so they were going to try and just donate it to a different charity. I saw that. Yeah, that was a terrible idea. I don't know who their <laughs> lawyer is, but he should be fired or she. Well, I'm but it's a good it idea she. though. No, no, no. It's a good idea because like conservatives punch themselves out. Every impediment that you put in front, you're gonna get somebody tired. Like that's what they yeah. do. They just they put up these pointless blocks so that people punch them down. They're like, oh guys, right over the next hill. That's where we're gonna get them. Um, that's the plan. Yeah. yeah I mean, go, sorry, up, go ahead. Uh, it opened up an avenue of liability. Now, yeah. th- now they're saying, um, okay, no, no, we're scrapping that plan. We're just going to refund everyone, but you yeah. have to complete the form on yeah. our website. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we've been telling everyone. We on don't our know side where that border, money goes to. <laughs> yeah. No, we've been telling everyone on our side of the border. Don't bother with the form. Take that tweet that they sent out saying, we're going to give it to someone else. Yeah. Take it to your bank and do a charge back. Yeah. Yep. Um, and hit them with yeah, fifteen dollars every donation that gets charged back. Yeah. So I have this. Uh, I have this. This theory that my dad taught me. Well, my dad. My dad never explicitly taught me anything but a couple things, and this is one of them that he said. He said, "Hey, remember, if it's good for you and bad for them, uh, it's it's illegal. And if it's good for them and bad for you, it's the law." That's what the law is. So when I hear about, like, let's all do chargebacks and hit them, my first reaction is, that sounds like it's bad for them and good for me. So I think that's probably wire fraud. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm that cynical of anything <laughs> involving finances that, like, they're going to go to the bank and go like, oh, yeah. Like, MasterCard told the bank to put me on the list so I'm banned forever. There was no yeah, is it, is process. There uh, what's that? Is there an update on that situation? For no, you? I'm there. I'm Are there forever. Just... And I and I promise you, in two years, it's supposed to only go five years. But in two years, when it uh, expires, I bet they'll find another reason to put me on. Like, well, you know, we looked at your case, and uh, fuck you, you're still on. Like, I kind of think it's gonna be a for life thing. Uh, but anyway, yeah. my point is, uh, I think they're gonna think they're gonna see that and go like, wow, well, uh, well, now we have a lot of criminals here. Let's just nail the big ones. Um, yeah. let's see who did, let's see who did this, who's telling them to do it. And then we'll just go arrest them. Um, that's what, or that's what I hope it doesn't them. happen. Yeah. Or disappear. And who's going to arrest them, Dick? Who, who's going to do cops. the arresting? Yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> like we said before the show, they're not our friends, <laughs> but Dick, they're heroes, right? <laughs> oh God. They serve and protect. Yeah. They're driving all their motorcycles with their flashing lights, like a big fucking parade next to all the truckers. Everybody's clapping. I'm like, well, wait a minute. 
what who's getting raped and murdered while all these guys it's are throwing so, themselves a big parade next to the truck it's so bad man uh, <laughs> the simping the is, is got, oh, well, it, then it again the police see, never yeah. prevent crime uh, uh does that drive you there. crazier as a black guy drexel what's that the, the cop simping yeah okay this is the beauty of cop simping is that uh, you know, I, I said this on Nick's show when when the Philando Castile case happened, right? There, there was like you know, high profile black men being shot by the cops, right? Yeah. Some justified, some not so much, right? Yeah. And then there were some other cases where white guys were getting yeeted and no one said a word, right? Yeah. And so I kind of laughed because I said, "Wait a minute!" I said, "White people, especially the right leaning whites, right? They yeah. seem to be very pro cop." When black dudes were getting yeeted, right? Yeah. Like, like you know, do you remember uh, who was the guy in, in the hotel, Tim? Who had a, who, they kept yelling out different instructions, and he's doing this, <laughs> oh, he puts his hand, up, and, he, God, and they that yeeted was him, horrible. right? Horrible. Yeah. They remember did. that? And it, I'm like, yeah. none of those cops served today. And I'm like, this. Hey, white people, where, where's all the, where's all the smoke, right? Where's the? Obviously, I always say this, this expression, Dick. I say, keep the same fucking energy, right? Right. And I called it on Nick's show. I said, hey, Nick, the same white. Right wing uh, leaning people who are going like this. Yeah, hey, man, the cap is always right. I mean, if, if, if Lando was doing this, that I said, and I called and I said, Nick, wait until a white woman is yeeted by a black cop. Oh, yeah. Let's see what happens. I'll be <laughs> goddamned if a Somalian didn't yeet the damn Becky like months later, right? And I was like, and Dick, you remember that, right? The, the white no. chick got killed, Justine Demond. It's oh, the biggest settlement. Ever. She, her family got paid like 20, 25 million oh, right here in Minneapolis, right? Yeah. That's taxpayer money. Cops right. don't feel the sting. And you know the beauty of it? I didn't hear Black Lives Matter say a fucking word. Because remember, before they were saying it was all about black, right? And they went like this, no, no, no. It's a power thing because cops are doing bad. And I was like, okay, that's your stance. Yeah. Let's hear the other side. Cops are always right. They're here to serve and protect. But as soon as a Becky got yeeted by a black guy, I was like, hey, yeah. Dick, this is me. <laughs> crickets nothing right crickets yeah. nothing i said wait where's the, where's the smoke where's the smoke well and all of a sudden everyone just kind of did the uh, oh so based on the cop and the victim and their color and all this yeah. or their gender based on gender and color yeah. you're gonna shift your morality got it okay it's time tim when we're gonna find Video after fucking video of white cops oppressing white people. I'm just going to sit back and go like this. This is who you sent for, right? This is who you sent for, right? Look, look, you heard about that, uh, Tim, in Australia, right? They literally cuffed a woman, beat her down, cuffed her right in front of her kid, right? You heard about that case? <sighs> right in front of her yep. kid. No remorse. And I yeah, said, I'm, I'm no, waiting for the white man. people to start simping. I'm just going to keep looking at them. This is for you, white people. Like I said, look, Dick, anyone who knows me knows I'm not one of those like race baiting guys, but like, I'm proving the hypocrisy. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. In the same way that every time black people sit for BLM and black thugs, I go like this. Let me show you a bunch of videos of black people committing crimes, and there's a lot more of them, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Because, Dick, I'm, I'm fair. I'm going to sit yeah, back and yeah. go like this. What we're witnessing right here is another one of these ignorant-ass Negroes raised by a German shepherd single mom <laughs> committing a handful of crimes in a crime spree, right? Oh, yeah. that's some real shit, Dick. I want you to look this up. We right. have a couple, and it was, I think, 18 and 19-year-old, right? They committed around 25 fucking robberies right here in Minneapolis. Oh, just that's a lot of caught. robberies. <laughs> a lot of robberies at 18. You just turned legal. You just That's what you do? So, uh, Dick, what do you want to do tomorrow, man? Well, I want to go to rob. Walgreens and hit a movie. Let's just go rob people instead. And they got busted, right? Yeah. BLM, every time a black person is doing fuck shit. We'll sit there and blah, and then I go like this. If black lives matter, why don't we get black fathers in the home? Yeah. Crickets. Hey, why don't we stop black abortion? Crickets. Uh, well. <laughs> black on black crime. Crickets. So do black lives really matter? Oh, is that, is that, uh, you know, uh, you would know better than most because they're building homes by you. These German shepherd, lesbian, feminist bitches are out here building mansions with, uh, the, the off the backs of dead black men. Oh yeah, I saw and that. That's they're getting busted. <laughs> you, you like that, right? Yeah, I get it. We're here. We're here for black people, and they don't. They never live in, in neighborhoods with these black people. They don't want to live. 
what, what did Joe Biden call it? I don't want them in a, in a jungle. <laughs> did he say that? Probably. Probably. Come on, yeah, dude. You know he said that. <laughs> I, I I think he called. I, I think he called. I want to. Yeah, he called it a racial jungle. I don't want my kids living in a racial jungle. Okay. I'm gonna find the article where they. I'm gonna clip it. The crack users or crack dealers get. Uh, if you just guys, that's probably the least offensive to me. Mm-hmm. That they're spending it on like giving drug users um, uh, medical supplies and and free crack pipes. Um, but it is it is funny. Well, it is all. It's always funny what they try to do to fix problems. Well, they're especially black get, problems. I, I love yeah, black solutions yeah. because they're always the most comical <laughs> and idiosyncratic yeah, and are. ass backwards. Because like <laughs> when, when they try to fix white problems, they actually do make logical sense. Like, watch this. Oh God, little Johnny has a substance abuse problem, and he's not the only one. There's an opioid crisis. There's poor white women who are getting addicted to heroin because it's the cheaper version of oxy what we're gonna yeah. do is create more treatment centers and outreach for them you go like this well, yeah that makes sense right logical it's a good idea and then black people hmm. yes yeah, single motherhood rampant crime you know what the best thing to do for these negroes is some clean <laughs> crack pipes <laughs> distributed by your government like what the fuck I mean, is that, is it, so, so that look, and, and you know what the best part is? That was the funniest thing to me. Like, I didn't, I don't, I know that the dirtiness of crack pipes is not a problem. It's not a problem. <laughs> look. <laughs> look, man. Like, and I mean, it's like the memeology of like the clean needles. And like, I know everybody my age, all the white women at home, my age, and like a little bit above are thinking like, oh yeah, clean drugs like yeah this was this is good this is a big deal when we did it like that was clean needles bitch yeah. that was about like aids and hepatitis hey, and shit. right not not the this about cold sores these motherfuckers are here you're sucking on glass dicks wondering <laughs> yeah I, i'm no hold on hold, hold on player i'll make sure that pipe is clean and are you vaxxed I, that's all right yeah dick i gotta ask you man what do you think about the exodus out of california because you're seeing all this craziness with the laws we keep hearing about this exodus, right? There's, I, I've seen yeah. some of these numbers about the, you know, U-Haul is complaining that people are taking their yeah. vans like, hey, deuces, bitches, and you never see them again. That's it. Give they them the all-time kill on the way out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, yeah they, they go ahead and chuck the deuce up, and next thing you know, you see them in, in Oklahoma or, Flo- or, or Texas. What do you have to say yeah. about all that with the exodus out of California? Uh, the, the taxes here are fucking terrifying. Um, I don't think... I don't think people are wrong to get out. I think it was, I think there was an exodus when I moved here in like 91. I think there was a similar kind of exodus from California. Um, well, the state's fucked. Like California, the state, I don't see, I don't see how it's ever going to get any better because we got guys like Vito just voting Democrat uh, for reasons they can't explain. Like, I don't know how you, I don't know how you change the mind of someone who doesn't know why they're why they're voting Democrat and still does it. Like, well, you know, you could just not vote. He's like, well, no, you got to vote. I'm like, why? Why? Why do you have to vote? You don't even know what you're voting for. Um, How about you voted for this, Dick? What? (laughs) Yeah. I don't. I hope we get another Schwarzenegger. Like Schwarzenegger was would have been great if he was actually a Republican and wasn't so worried about just being liked. Uh, I hope we get some kind of fucking Mel Gibson running for governor. Oh god, that would be comedy. Like that. Mel that would be, would be fucking great. Well, hold on, hold on, and Dick. he would win. Hold on, Dick. Who do you think? <laughs> who do you think would be a better and funnier governor, Mel Gibson or Caitlyn Jenner? Uh oh, god. Um, <sighs> Caitlyn would be pretty funny, but I I got to give it to Mel because I think he's more. Uh, you know, he's a man, so he wouldn't... What are you I trying think, to say, Dick? Uh, you know, he's not a woman. <laughs> uh, like the beautiful Caitlyn Jenner is. We can, <laughs> Dick, this show is uncancelable. It's, uh, it's, it's a black man in Black History Month. I, I think yeah, we got a pass. It's still being recorded. I, I still... I'm one of those... I'm one of the rare comedians that's just never been on film saying the N-word. I don't know why it's so... I don't know why it's so po- impossible for anyone who gets famous to have done it, but I just am not on tape saying any of this shit. Um, I don't... I gotta go with Mel. I think he's... I think he's so... Because he can... He's... He can... He can act better than yeah, Caitlyn true. Jenner. So I think it would be funnier to see him do. Plus, he's all about God and shit. Like, it would be funny to hear him talking about that. If you get him drunk, he'd have uh, the funniest outbursts. Oh, God. Mel is great, <laughs> man. Drunk. 
Well, you know, I mean, the only thing that Mel really messed up on was his whole divorce. Uh, he should have gone to OJ for tips and guidance. Yeah. Because, yeah, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm going to see, I believe that you're going to see more and more of that. You know, we talk about RPM with his uh, HMT series, right? His hockey mask time where dudes are just mm -hmm. eating these chicks. Like, oh, you, you want to do some fuck shit or you want to divorce great me or whatever. Oh, I got something for you. And they put on the, they want to go ahead and put on the hockey mask and get the isotoners, right? And yeah. <laughs> your state has some of the biggest scandals, right? Robert Blake and all these other people. Yeah, that and, was a good one. <laughs> you know, like, what, what do you think about the the uh, the rising tide of uh, of how people are going to react to this? Because you know they're talking about doubling you guys's taxes. I don't know if you heard about that, right? Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. What What is your take um, on that? Like, what do you, how do you think people will respond to their taxes going even high? You guys have insane, dude. I was out there. And I, I remember uh, I knew a girl who uh, they were talking about furloughs and shit. I'm like, bruh. Ev shit. Eventually, they're just gonna take Dick's Patreon and deposit it directly into the government account. Yeah, they're always talking about doing like ten years after you leave the state, coming and get your taxes yep. too. I'm like, yeah, I don't know about that, guys. That's you can go go fuck yourselves. Uh, you're coming after your taxes that way. I don't know, man. It's the numbers just are terrifying here in California, in California nationwide, but in California especially. I don't know how we're going to recoup a lot of this stuff. There's no reason for big companies in Silicon Valley to be here anymore. Mm -hmm. They beefed up they they beefed up their their salaries with these um, useless they are useless. woke crusaders like the every big company has slack channels where um i don't know 60 percent of their employees just sit there talking about how they can do more to like prevent racist microaggressions <laughs> in the widest workforce in, in the in the world yep uh like and i mean every app every app you have on your phone every every finance um uh platform Every, anyone based in Silicon Valley has just uh, tens of thousands of massive salary, useless people that they could instantly get rid of and farm out to India or just get rid of and not have anymore. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know how that would do to impact California. What do you like, see as there a solution was a time to that? When, uh, nuclear bombs. Of course. Just, or uh, 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 coronavirus, ironically. Like, I was big on Team Virus. I was hoping... The coronavirus would wipe all over the face of the earth and uh, take all the uh, the sinners and fornicators and uh, fat people and old people with it and um, like the black hole sun. But we weren't. That wasn't to be. No. Nope. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how the system's going to figure it out. Uh, I, the only thing people can do is just get Bitcoin and wait it out. Um, well, you've been hearing about I, some of these stories know. about you know like there was that couple in New York, I believe that like stole was like something billion in bitcoin and stuff yeah like, wasn't that crazy yeah that's that insane man. rapper yeah yeah, yeah. Well, what do you think about that because you know people keep talking about you know uh crypto and stuff but what about the theft yeah. what about the hacking and the theft uh i mean that's it's i think they were set up i don't know how you steal i don't know how you steal 32 billion dollars in bitcoin and you leave it like unencrypted in your dropbox file and then you're doing like a weird uh, Eastern European raps on TikTok. It just doesn't add up to me. Good good for them if that's what happened. But if I have a $400 million bounty on my head, I'm not chilling at a bodega uh, in Soho doing rap videos with my dipshit noodly armed boyfriend. I'm getting the fuck out of town. But then again, uh, I don't know. What about we've you? Seen, we've seen Stranger though, right? Like, th think yeah. about some of the dumb things that we've seen people get caught up doing, right? Like, like, yeah. are you really, you know, like, like there's been people who have recorded, you, you have like this new era of like fake gangster, right? The, the wannabe gangbangers. Yeah. These guys are committing crimes on Facebook Live, right? On TikTok. It's like, uh. <laughs> like, true. What, that girl like, who what? shot herself in the pussy. Yeah. Like, like what part of the game oh, is God. this? Dick, uh. I've never seen shit. Like, 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 when we were growing up, you didn't, like, like there was no real clout. You see what I'm saying? Like, like because, because there was no avenue for, like, it, like. There was, you know, I yeah. think there was there were more myths, right? Like that's why there were. We're just on legends. TV. We're not on TV. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, There's oh, nothing yeah, in between. TV. Nothing yeah. in between, right? Like, <laughs> if you were in a movie, it was a big deal. Even if you, even if you were just an extra, right? Someone go, look, there yeah. he is. You remember that? That was a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Dude, you could go on Price is Right. Like, oh, watch Price is Right. I'm, I'm in the crowd. I'm gonna be there. Yeah. Oh my god, you're gonna be able to see yeah. me. Like, it was a huge yeah. deal. Now, 
You can get up on a YouTube channel or get up on wherever, right? Okay, you could do a Twitch stream. And it was what was it, the the hot tub streams that were hot for a while or whatever. And these hoes right here selling foot pics. You got 48 year old cops on OnlyFans busting that thing wide open, looking <laughs> horrible. The bitch looked like a fucking overweight beaver, man. And I'm like, and she was making four grand a month. And I said, this is where we're at? Dick, this is where we're at? Drex, what's your solution? Because I know yeah, Dick's going to love what California? your solution is. Uh, obviously, the- eating people? <laughs> Eating people. Accelerating yeah. into the brick wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, dude. You, you, okay. Now, Dick, I am an unapologetic. I think there's more to act. Let me put it that way. I think there's still there's still more blood in the stone. Oh, like, yeah, I don't yeah. think we're yeah, well, no, there's no, no, still no. Do you know what's sad? We're not even yeah. close. I know. Like, like, yeah. like, Dick, everyone keeps thinking that this is the end, right? Like, I mean uh-uh. they're, they're talking about it. Desmond is amazing, it's to be celebrated. You know, we got uh uh, uh we got dudes. Committing sex acts at pride parades while children are watching, it can't get no worse. Can it? Man. Oh. I don't, I gotta say this. I don't give a fuck about anyone's kids. I don't care what they, keep them home. If, don't, don't ever let them out in public for what they see. But man, they are, they are stealing. At, why they've, well, they've got everyone upset about that shit. They are taking every goddamn dollar. They're taking yep. money from you that you that you haven't even started making yep. yet. They're taking your kids' distract money away them. from them. You distract the yeah. topless, the sheep, and then you take yeah. like, Look, a lot of people may not know this. The largest wealth transfer in the history of our country was over COVID. Yeah. 2020, go look at the, the, where the money went. You go like this. Where the hell did all the money go? It got transferred, people, right? And you're starting to see yeah. the midterms are coming up, right? You're starting to see with a lot of the, the midterms, do you ever notice that a lot of the left, a lot of the Democrats in, in these Democrat-run cities are suddenly saying, hey, we're lifting all, we're going to give you some freedoms back. The same people uh-huh. that push to eliminate all your small businesses, take all of your rights, uh-huh. are now saying, oh, oh, we're the good guys. We're, get, we're letting you have an illusion of freedom again. And you know what? This is what's sad, man, because I've seen this with black people for, for decades because they're fucking the useful idiots. The sad thing is, all of these woke leftists are going to look at this and be like, they care about us. Yeah, it's we like, did it. <sighs> we did it. We did it, guys. We fought it. Um, I said when this first started, I said that would be the most that would be the most annoying part of all this is that none of it's going to work. Yep. And we're going to come out and everyone's going to go. I mean, we did it. Good job. Yep. And then we're going to have to listen to that. Forever. We're Forever. all in this COVID together, be Dick. We did it. Two years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Dick, it was, it was 15 days to uh, curve the uh, curve the spread, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two years later, right? Two hey, Drex. Two years later. Uh, hey, Drex, how long are you in Ottawa for? Well, it's going to be 15 days to flatten the government. To flatten the government. You know, this is where we're did at. Did you guys see that 18 wheels to flatten the <laughs> to flatten the curve? Oh, okay. That's one. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the hug need is the greatest thing. Well, all, all you can do is laugh because it's like it, it comes from a place of what you realize is that like the the people that like you know I rag on cops and stuff right, but I always want to mm. remind people that cops are still people right. They, they put on a uniform mm. sometimes. If you want to solve the problem, I've always said this. I go back to the best friends gang of Detroit. It's the muscle. You have to appeal to the muscle. If the cops are the muscle, they're the foot soldiers, right? Hey, watch this, Dick. Mm-hmm. Hey, Dick, we're going to make a stand. The government said that we are, we're not going to uh, allow our business to be open. This, you know, we're pretending this is the early days of 2020, right? The government mm-hmm. says that they're not going to allow our businesses to be open because we're not considered essential, right? You and I and other businesses say, no, you don't get to dictate what's essential. The, the consumer does, right? Watch this. This is, this is how weak the government is, if you want it to be. Yeah. We stay open. What does the government do next? What's their next step? Find you. Uh, find you or send what, the what's, cop. They're going to send the cops, right? Now watch this. Send the cops. They send the cops. And the cops go like this. We're not going to do anything. Now what does the government yeah. do? You tell yeah. me. If, if the cops say we're going to stand by the, the people, right, what does the government do next? Well, they're, they call in the National Guard, That's I the guess. Most they can do. Lawsuits, no, 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 probably. Hold on, hold on, watch this. National yeah. Guard, who are also people, go like this. We're not going after our own citizens. You're not going to do it. What yeah. happens? You tell me. Yeah. You see how that works? All yeah. you have to do is stop. Stop fucking doing what you're told and just go like this. Join forces. Hey, you, you see that person over there that looks different from you? 
I know this is going to sound crazy. I, I know this is insane. Stop viewing that person as your enemy and just like this. You know, I'm going to let's humor ourselves. Let's just join forces and see who gets mad, right? Dick, if you're a black guy, you're a white guy, you're a Latino, you're a trans, you're gay, you're straight, just join forces and see who gets mad. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. Rex, I've I've got the perfect example. The perfect example. So um most people most people in MGTOWN will know that I'm an Alberta separatist, right? I'm actively working to separate Alberta. We also know, Dick, you should know about Quebec separatists. Right, because that okay, that was oh, that was I think thing. I'm familiar with yeah, them. yeah, that was a yeah, thing. okay, yeah. They were waving the so Quebec is likes to be its own nation, right? They have their own flag, they do their own thing. They have the National Assembly as their provincial legislature. Are right? you got, is that the Texas of of Canada then? Yeah, pretty much. Because Canada, you Just, know, Texas is always kind of you got oil too. Yeah, uh, Alberta's got oil. Quebec doesn't. Oh, oh okay, yeah. Alberta. Quebec's oil. Okay. chief export is electricity because they have so much hydroelectric power. Uh, Anyways, uh, okay. uh, irrelevant. Um, they so th- they are very, very. Uh, you know, they don't fly this flag. They fly the Quebec fleur de lis. Okay. Right. You know, you fucked up when you have Alberta and Quebec flying the same flag, singing the same national anthem in both of in front of both legislatures. Right. The two separatist provinces are coming together to protest your ass. That's when you know you fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Unity, like, like I, I've always told people. Look, I did a, I did a show about this, and I said, if you want to see the deep state get weaker, you unify. If you want to see the deep state get stronger, you divide. That's how they get. To, the more divided you are, the stronger they get. The more united, they just get weaker and weaker and weaker. Because, because Dick, when you, when you can appeal to the muscle, the enforcement arm of the government. If the enforcement mm-hmm. arm of the government says no, they. All the government, this is what people don't understand. All the government are is they're just people. All they're doing is going, I'm ordering you to do this. If you just don't do it, all they're gonna, you know who they're going to send. If the people they are going to send say no, they don't have another option. The military, yeah. it, all the military is like this. No. If everyone says no, right, Dick? You just say yeah. no, and people go like this. Yeah. Uh oh. Did the did the government this strong, you know, you no know, all powerful, omnipotent, omniscient government? Did they just get weak as fuck by people just saying yeah. no? Right. The trucker convoy. Well, that would be nice. But 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 <laughs> yeah. What's gonna happen? X amount of people go. The I want to lose my job. I don't want to do this. Yep. So I gotta do yeah. what I'm told. It's like oh, there we go. Yeah. Division. Well, we got. We also have um, hiring initiatives in L.A. At least, where we target hiring dumb cops. Like it was a. It was policy to not to uh, if you scored too high on their aptitude test or whatever to not hire you. Oh shit! Uh, That was a big deal like ten years ago. There's a a lawsuit over it or something. Yeah, exactly. We're all sitting there at home going, "Oh, yeah, this this won't backfire at all." (laughs) <laughs> and, oh no it didn't backfire like that was the point they just want a bunch of stupid idiots that they will just do whatever they tell them to do they're in their face every day telling them uh telling what you know they have fox news playing 24 yeah. 7 down at the police station yep. uh brainwashing them to just do whatever the government says sounds like the black uh, community so single moms there you go yeah they, they, they're literally yeah. the same thing right uh they well you remember yeah. the trump years they, all they did all day was talk about how horrible trump was right and then when you ask yeah. people, like, you know, they would say, like, you know, Trump is the worst thing ever. But when you ask them for specifics, <laughs> Trump is racist. And you went like this. Give me a specific. They never had anything. <laughs> no, I asked Vito because I was I was making fun of Vito on my show, like, uh, for all the stuff that Biden does because he voted for Biden. I'm like, well, yeah, you support that. And he goes, no, no, I could I could name stuff for Trump that that you didn't support. So I said, OK, go ahead. Name something for Trump that I that I, quote, don't support or that I wouldn't cop to. And he sat there for like two minutes and he couldn't think of anything. Of course. Uh, can you can you not think of anything Trump did? Or can you not think of anything that he did that I wouldn't? Because I could think of stuff he did that I don't like, but I still voted for the guy. I, I'm guessing uh, the assassination but, of Suleimani was not a big uh, plus check in your box. I mean, I would have said no, but that was, but it, you know. Also, the World War Three uh, memes were great. <laughs> the World War Three, yeah. I was more upset with the uh, with this bombing Syria stuff. The assassinations, I don't mind so much, but just bombing people because bombing countries it makes it looks like you're attacking the people, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, assassination, I was, assassination was, bleh, yeah, whatever. 
we're gonna have to assassinate the bump stock thing was annoying i don't know trump had a lot yeah of after the vegas shooter the most right? annoying fuck up yeah which i mean you want to talk about sh shootings that have no explanation that's where you start the vegas guy yeah the vegas guy yeah like, yeah wow no reason no reason <laughs> We that was one of the most bizarre country music. Yeah, well, that, that guy yeah, slipped under the rug quick, though. <laughs> Maybe they were honking yeah. past midnight, and his cat couldn't sleep. Yeah, he had a lot of guns too, and we don't know like anything about the guns. Or, like, Nothing. Where we have an equivalent from. one too, Dick. We had a uh, Halifax shooter who smuggled his guns in from the U.S., but he was a dentist who just snapped. Like there's, we don't oh, know really? why, but I think he shot 20 hmm. people, which was Damn, even wow. worse than, I think you're familiar with the Ecole Polytechnique shooting, the Montreal shooter, right? Every, no. Um, oh, anyways, I don't, that was. No, I try not to, worst. I try not to learn much about uh, shooters in case I become one. Cause I don't <laughs> want to be that guy. They're like, oh yeah, he was really knowledgeable on shooters. <laughs> yeah. well, so up until that happened in a, I think it was 89. Uh, ARs were AR-15s were legal in Canada, and then after that happened, okay. they got rid of them. Of course um, it so this Stupid. Halifax Sigh shooter got had more uh, fatalities than the Polytechnic. But up until now, that was the worst shooting in Canada. So he smuggled an AR-15 over the border and just walked up his country road and gunned everyone he could see. Then he stole oh. a <laughs> on a country road. Yeah, on a country road in rural Halifax, oh, set fire to people's sucks. houses, and when people ran to come and try oh, to put no. the fire out, he just he just shot them. And then oh, what he, a psycho! He built a replica police car and used it to pull people over and execute them on the side of the road. Oh shit! Wow! How Dick, is this not made into a movie? Uh, because it happened yeah. last year. They haven't finished filming yet. God well, damn. Um, wow, I didn't hear about that at all. Oh, well, look it up, man. It's this? insane. It's kind of like weird that we like, would have missed should do a like video on it because that is one hell of a mask. Um, Holy shit. Wow. And then, so, what was, so what was his backstory then? He was a dentist who just hated people. That's it. That, that's oh. that's his backstory. He just, that's it. He, he was a there, there, dentist he, who was no like divorce, super. Um, nothing, nothing, hap well, nothing happened in his life that made him go like, today's the day. Like nothing No, no, nothing immediate. Like he was no Marvin Haymeyer, right? And he planned out the the fake cop car and stuff too. Yeah. Like he's in his garage painting it yeah, and making and he a ordered replica. De decals, decals, and lights. And <laughs> Whoa! And he he bought a <laughs> uniform off of Amazon or something. God damn! And how many people did he kill? I think it was twenty. That's a lot of planning for just twenty people. How did he get stopped? Yeah. Uh, well, so what happened is he smashed into a cop car head on oh. with his cop car, got out, oh. executed the cop. Then uh, stole her car was still drivable, so he stole her car, made it oh. about maybe a few clicks, stopped at a gas station, and that's when our tactical just gunned him down. Because the wow. thing is, when you're in rural anywhere, you're easy to shoot yeah. at because there's no collateral. Yeah, yeah. So they had oh, so to walk guy... chasing him, and they just, you know, they just wow. sent bullets down range. This is the guy, he... Tim Gabriel Wartman. Yes, Wartman. Um, his girlfriend, I think, got charged with aiding and abetting him. Maybe supplying something for him. I, I, man, I, I'm a little fuzzy on that detail, but you know what? Like, I love he's at our version like of Las Vegas. There's no reason why he did this. I'm looking at his face. Well, people, this this is good the guy. So, so Dick, look, I always get called a monster by society, right? Oh, oh God, it's a big black guy. I'm so scared. Yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna rape all the, the women and children. He's gonna kill all the men. He's gonna play basketball with my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and and you know what? Every time you hear about these shootings, does the guy ever look like me? Ever? No. I'm looking at this no. this guy named Gabriel Wartman. Dick, pull yeah. up this guy's picture, man. Look at Where this fucking dope you, face, soft. He ass actually looks dude. similar to the Vegas shooter. He does. Where are you putting yeah. it? I'm looking at him right here. Look at look at this fucking. Oh, stuff. I don't have it uh, here. I can. There he is. Oh, there it is. Look oh, at that guy. Wow. Nice. They always make him smile too. Yeah, yeah. yeah they make sure they give him. A, <laughs> look at the dentist. I dick, love dude, that. Man. He was a dick. Would I you love ever? When they do that. Would you ever expect your dentist to pull out an assault rifle and just start yeeting people on the sidewalk? I expect it of everybody. Like, I'm always shocked that there's just not so much more crime. Uh, it's even people getting, like, it's even difficult for people to get into a fight. They'll always 
go up and start shoving yeah, each yeah, other yeah. and like tickling each other's balls and, and giving them an <laughs> out. Rubbing. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're just a very non-violent species. When it happens, now, like, now hold on, uh, Dick. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, Dick. We we all know this is why you got to be nice to people, even when it's painful to do so. Because deep mm-hmm. down, you always think about. Oh, there's yeah. always that guy, right? Yeah. Everyone's worked with a dude, or you know, you looked at him, you were like, you know, it would like, like, because, because, Dick, let's face it, there are certain people, right? When, when, you know, these things happen, there's always like that one person who's like, that person was always fucked up, right? Like, you know, everyone's like, yeah. I'm so shocked. I can't Sandy believe Hook. this happened. Who? No one was shocked that the yeah. guy who did Sandy Hook Nobody. and Lanza. No one was shocked he did that. Nobody. Like, like, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dick, always be the guy that gets the text, right? I want everyone who listens to this. Please be that guy. Be the guy who goes like this. Fuck is that? Don't go to school today. Don't go to work today. Dick, you want to be that guy, right? <laughs> when someone says don't go to school today or don't go to work today, you're like, uh, I guess I, I won't. Yeah, I, I'll call in sick. I and told then, my friend, uh, this guy I knew in college is working for the early asteroid detection system for NASA. He's an astronomy guy. I told him, like, hey, if you get if you get some word in that an asteroid's coming, like, let me know. Let me know first so I can get a little head start on all the murdering and stuff. But yep. by the time it goes through the chain of command and gets put out through the emergency broadcast system. Yeah, definitely. You definitely want to be the guy getting text. It's needed. I, I want people to, like, like cherish, cherish your own humanity, right? Because it's your own humanity that can ultimately save your life. Because how many times have we heard about these stories, right, Tim? The guy's getting ready to go yeet up everybody, right? He goes like this. Not you, though. You were nice to me. Like yeah, you, you shared your lunch with me the other yeah, day. Yeah, you, you shared your You're lunch. Or, you, know, you, you can leave. You can leave. Is this like Billy Madison? Like Steve Buscemi? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but, but next, we're coming up on our two hours here. Oh, shit. Well, yeah, oh, Dick, shit. Wanna... Do we have any uh, any last questions for Dick before we close? Oh, um, yeah, go for it. Uh, so, uh, we did get a question from Yashkin about the uh, California recall. What did you think about that? Um. D- oh yeah. Did you see that when that white uh, fat girl with pink hair put on a gorilla mask to throw eggs at Larry Elder, oh. the Republican front runner? Oh, you didn't see that? No. Tracks? What? Larry Elder, the conser- the black conservative, was, was it a black uh, chick? radio. P- uh, no, 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 not a black chick. Damn. So Larry, Larry Elder was the Republican uh, yep. recall candidate. Yeah, he went against uh, uh, Newsom. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he's like, I mean, he's been on the radio for as long as like is, and this this white girl put on a gorilla mask and threw eggs at him, and like nobody, they really let the gorilla mask thing slide. Nobody, uh, uh, if it was a conservative doing that to like, you know, uh, the other side, they'd have been, uh, oh, of course, racist, thrown into yeah, the ocean. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. like going to UCB and uh, opening with "What's up, my n words," right? Yeah. Um, it was. They, you know, they should chase you out of there. There was just no. There was no chance he was going to win. Uh, it's sad. We need a celebrity. The only thing that works in California for Republicans is celebrities. Oh, did you get in touch with Dollhouse Phil? No, I haven't. But I have looked at his site more than once since then. I gotta. <laughs> I gotta email him. All right. What, what did you My, find uh, most enticing, Dick? Uh, this. That's the size of the booby. That's what I really. That's what really appealed to me on his doll side. Well, and Phil said he could mold one on the back of the doll for you too. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's what I want. I actually Front got a screenshot back, of right. your face when he said that. Right? It's oh just, god! It's like watching a little kid light up when. Drex, do you remember when you asked oh, yeah, for a his, toy his for like face. six months from your parents, right? And then yeah, you know, two Drex from Santa, and it's what you were asking. It's for. exactly what you wanted, and you just. A, a part of you could just glow for that moment in time, right? And you yeah. like literally hugged the box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just you, everything is right in the universe in that you, in that one shining you crystallized got me a moment. Nintendo. <laughs> it, it was a bit. Well, I, still I mean, feel like that. Well, well Dick, the, the beauty of this is that you know our our resident degenerate Koopa. Uh, Koopa okay. used to be like all active in the chat, right? He's all active in the Discord. All of a sudden, we just didn't hear from him, right? I'm like, what the fuck? He just disappeared. And then it it hits us. What happened? He was gone for like two weeks. His doll <laughs> came. Yeah, is <laughs> a custom made, custom made the- goblin doll. <laughs> and a goblin? Goblin. Yeah, don't ask. Don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have time to go down that rabbit hole. Oh wow! But I'm telling you, like Phil is not lying when he says you have a honeymoon period with your new doll. 
You will Hulk <laughs> smash that thing. You will need to replace the springs in your mattress. Oh, man. Oh, my he, God. He just went ham on the fucking goblin. And it's like, I mean, he was sitting there like, I, we, we, had, we, uh, we had a live chat, right? And Koopa was like, yeah. he's like, oh, yeah, man, it's been so great. I can't wait. I finally got home. He leaves the Discord chat to go smash the doll again. <laughs> and then, like, like, he was like, literally dick. back in. He was it's literally like, Rick and oh, Morty. Fuck. Morty comes down, grabs the cart, and yeah, yeah. drinks, and then up oh goes. Oh, my God. <laughs> literally that. <laughs> But I yeah, haven't even you, had sex with this doll. I mean, you like like we're gonna do a uh, a little review session. He's gonna she's gonna uh, have his uh, his goblin doll because like you can't <laughs> help but laugh because it's like, bro, this is like you're, you're basically a fucking you're a meme. Like that's like the whole like the point of the joke of the sex <laughs> doll, right? Like, yeah. You never yeah. see the guy again, right? Like oh, you got the sex doll, you never saw him again. But it didn't actually happen. happen either. It's yeah, like it's Quagmire like, when he discovered you could get porn right. on a computer, right? He comes yeah, out with yeah. this huge oh. beefcake arm, right? <laughs> yeah. Goop is oh, gonna no, come that... and he's gonna look shredded. He's gonna turn Shaft on. Oh, <laughs> poor my Goblin. God. I, dude, I, it, it's a shame how many times Koopa has demolished the Goblin and defiled her. <laughs> and it's, dude, the, the, the degeneracy is, is so oh, great, man. That, that's why I love having guys like you on because. One of the, the the issues that I have, Dick, is that there are so few guys on the internet who are just going to be honest and especially open and honest about their own degeneracy, right? Like, if yeah. you like to have tits on the back of a fucking doll, just say it. Sure. But everybody, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Every guy tries to pretend like, oh, I'm not that Dude, kind of guy. It's I crazy. can't it's say so anything. Much worse. It's like it was. It's gotten so much, uh, so much more repressed. I know I said that earlier, but it's like. Yeah, uh, in the with younger guys too, like yeah. uh, the famous younger guys on YouTube that have like millions of followers, and they're like telling each other like, "Oh, you don't fuck fans, like that's not cool." I'm like, "What the fuck are you guys talking about?" Well, like, what, I gotta agree with them because me too. I gotta, oh, I gotta oh, be, I gotta, I gotta go on their side with that one. But me Drex, too is oh, man. <laughs> the problem is that a lot of these YouTubers are getting outed for underage fans. Yeah, like I told you about Ryan Haywood, right? With Rooster Teeth. Yeah. TV. What did he do? Okay, Drek. Oh, man. Uh, Dick, he, ultimate scumbag, right? So he is the uh, quintessential beta simp. He married a woman who, um, you know, he simped for in high school and she turned him down. And then he, okay. like, found her again after college and begged her to take him. And she's like, fine. <laughs> okay. Right? Uh, she makes a lot more money than him. He's in entertainment, right? You know, Rooster Teeth and Red vs. Blue and Machinima mm -hmm. and all that. I know red versus blue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So Ryan Haywood is one of the actors on that. Um, okay. So he, he doesn't get, make a lot of money, right? Rooster Teeth was not a billion dollar company when they started. Okay. Um, yeah. And then his wife is a vet. So she makes a lot more money than he does. So okay. You know, the power dynamic in that relationship, right? Cool. So he's, well, yeah. Wait, what about the underage part? That's what no, I, no, I, I don't know. I had to set it up there. <laughs> so he hits up, his, he hits up fans. Okay. And, the thing I learned from Vic Mignogna is that the women fans of these online content creators are unhinged. They are <laughs> batshit crazy and overweight. Yeah. Yeah. So they're hitting them up and they're giving, they're making, they're building him up. Right. So he's like, okay, yeah, yeah, no, my, I'm not happy with my wife and you, you make uh, me happy. Right. So they yeah. meet up in a hotel room and he's doing, Bad, you know, dude. 18, 19 year olds. And then a few of them are 17. Oh, <laughs> and it's like, Ooh. of course, and you, uh -oh. you you remember EDP, right? Um, no, he was some kind of pedophile, right? Yeah, uh, like of course. They, they were, and, oh, and Cody Wilson, you know Cody, you remember Cody Wilson? Oh, he got, got done so catfished. dirty. He got fucking done <laughs> so dirty. So I mean, yeah. the problem with these online personalities is that there's so many of them get outed as going after these young kids. Uh, Chris Daly is a good example. Now, in his defense, he didn't know, right? Because yeah. when she leaked the text messages, everyone's like, well, wait a second. He's like, I thought you were 18. Oh, shit. Sorry. We can't talk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, still still uh, was still was taken to the cleaners, though. I know. Well, obviously. It's, it's crazy. Because it's got nothing to do with victims. It's just about destroying successful men. Yep. Uh, it's, it's a wealth all this, like Women all hate successful wealth men. Transfer. Yeah, and then all their orbiters and simps just want to want them to live their dream of taking down successful men. It's just, it's disgusting, and I hate it. Uh, but I do think I do think we're very repressed still. Yeah. Uh, well, and you see the surveys going, like no one's getting laid anymore. 
Yeah. No. Oh, even women, not dressed, even women are not getting laid yeah, anymore. Yeah, it's yeah. Well, you know, I was talking to uh, I was talking to wifey tonight, and I said <laughs> the next ten to twenty years is going to be so disturbing. Mm-hmm. I mean, Dick, you you see what's going on in California now, right? In terms of like greater yeah. society, everything else. If you know, like we just said, no matter how bad you think it is right now, right? What is this? Uh, uh, February tenth, two thousand twenty-two. Okay, February tenth, two thousand thirty-two. What do you think it's going to look like? Right. The rest of the country will look like California. It, it, absolutely. It, like, like, you know, yeah. if, if you're looking at California, going, "Oh my God, California is crazy." Uh, yet all of those crazy cases that we've been hearing, Tim, were all in Texas, right? Oh yeah, the dad has to pay for gender reassignment surgery. Those are all Texas cases. Yeah, I mean, twenty years ago, um, California was like the whole country now. Like that's the way it works. We just pipe in. Yeah, uh, in Minnesota, you we make fun of California. Minnesota is equally as bad, but colder. Yeah, Uh, but there's always California to make fun of. So it's like it's always fine here. These fucking California freaks are like, does it feel good to keep saying California because your state's fucked? Like uh-huh. it, it could be so much you what every time you say, oh, but what about California? You could be saying like, oh, but what about here uh, 50 years ago? Like uh, it was way better. Hmm. Uh, but they, but it's just too much fun to shit on California, I guess. Yeah. So whatever. Uh, well, you always got to find. We uh, always find the extreme, right? Like you always find like whoever's the worst. It, it's the straw man argument, right? Like, you know, let's let's yeah. pick somebody who's like the worst. Right. And they be like, yeah, it, 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 it's it, it's kind of reminds me of like the uh, like the uh, NFL NBA stuff like that. Right. They always look at these guys. This is a bunch of thugs. And then the, the, the stats came out. There are fewer uh, arrests in like you know criminals in the NFL than there are in general society, right? You know per capita. So it's like oh, there's sure. a bunch. Of, it's just they get more coverage. That's all it is. Oh yeah. Like, like oh, all God. of these guys. And yeah, yeah. You, you had like you had yeah you had uh, you had 15 guys over the course of an entire season get busted for domestic violation grape whatever other crime right but yeah. how many people are in the nfl right when you, when you you know when you say 15 out of how many you see what i'm saying thousand yeah so so, yeah. so when someone looks they go so how many is, people is that and then they look at general society 330 million americans all day every day somebody's committing some kind of fucking crime <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of people out there beating their wives yeah. uh have you met them they, well, most yeah. of them are male feminists like ron toy <laughs> oh yeah that was yeah, uh it's... that's uh monica real's uh, seven year fiance. I think I told this oh, to you he... before. That's that was one of the people involved in the Vic Lasagna case. There. Did he slap her around or something with a remote control? Not her, but his ex wife. Oh, his ex. Yeah, oh. he uh, hit her with a remote control. Mm. He threatened to kill her dog because she was late picking him up. <laughs> oh, that's way worse. <laughs> and when a judge said, "You're fucked, man. You need to start paying for this shit," he was like, "I'm going to come over to your house and teach you a lesson." Ah. Uh. Wow, he's, he's a free man. He's out on Twitter, you know. He's all, and he's saying Vic Mignogna is the one who should be canceled. Oh my God, I don't, I do not understand how, I don't understand how people work. They're so well, well, actually, anyways, let's. Uh, the, the, those are the guys that these women choose. Yet they always seek the action from the male member yeah. outside of that relationship. Right? Like they choose these beta simp's, and they're like, "Oh my God, I made a horrible choice." This guy's a crazy woman hater, right? He's the real yeah. misogynist. Dick, you and I could sit in a room with a bunch of women, and we would be just talking our regular shit. And they'd be like, oh, my God, he sounds so sexist. And then, like, they're hanging out with some dudes that are like, yeah, Dick and Drex are evil, and they're toxic. After, like, one night, they would come over, they would run to us like, oh, God, please, please. Save and they're creeps. Creep. They're creeps. They are creeps. They're creeps. Fuck these fucking dudes. But, Dick, thank you so much for coming on, man. Oh, it's a shit. long time coming. Thanks, guys. That yeah. flew by. I didn't even know two hours was up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was I know, great right? talking to you both. It was great talking to you guys. Oh, well, uh, we appreciate it. Uh, show your stuff. Yeah. How can people find you? Uh, Patreon.com slash the Dick Show or Dick.show. Um, we got Road Rage coming up, another live show in like a month. Yeah, I think, Drex, you're going there, right? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. yeah. So, oh, so awesome. Dick, so, Dick, okay, now let me write this down. Okay, what is the actual date and place? Because I know you were trying to decide between... March 5th, downtown. It's March 5th, downtown. I'm not downtown. saying exactly when until, like, the day of. Oh, uh, shit. Okay, so March 5th, downtown. Downtown what city? L.A. Uh, L.A. L.A., nothing's open. 
What, what? It's getting more open. <laughs> I, don't, look, I, don't, I don't do vaxes. I don't do all this weird shit. I don't well, do fucking I mean, I don't, I can't tests. Fucking help you What's with XRP? XRP Ripple? to dick. The, crypt, the uh, cryptocurrency? Oh. March 5th. LA. Okay, so I wrote it down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Drexel, take notes from Dick. That's how you shill yourself. I always have oh, to yeah. take care of the shilling. <laughs> I mean, Dick, I manage. I manage all the upload accounts, all the socials for this show, right? So when yeah. Drex goes on a show, um, I usually have to send him a note. It's like, okay, Drex, here's here's how you shill us. <laughs> oh no, I'm pretty good at it. I try to work it in at the beginning, usually too, to really fuck up the the uh, flow of the conversation. <laughs> Because, you know, in case it doesn't go, the interview doesn't go well, I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Get it out there right at the beginning. Yeah. Right? I always know our interview is going to go well because, like, I remember meeting you uh, in, in Ybor City. And it was just like, I was trying to explain to people. I said, look, man, certain people are just nonchalant. Hey, Dick. Hey, yeah. Drex. What's up? It's just like, it's just like, <laughs> like, you know, Nick is there. It's just like certain people are just like, yo, what's up, bro? Everything's cool. There's lots yeah. of people out here. Like, like, they just act weird around people, man. <laughs> And it's just I fucking know. weird. And I remember, I remember, like, I remember seeing you a couple of times where you're like entertaining people. Like, I could tell you were kind of like, okay, some of you fuckers are weird. Where's my girlfriend? Grab yeah. her. And, like, I, I kind of caught that. And I was like, oh, I know what happened to Dick. Someone said yeah. or did something really weird right next to him. Every once in a while, man, there's there's a lot of attention seeking that goes on online. There's too much attention seeking that goes on online and in person sometimes at these events, but. It, and you throw liquor in there, and it can go. You know, anybody can have a bad night, but definitely sometimes, sometimes it can. Well, be yeah. Well, weird. okay. So, so Dick, just so I know, the what are the current restrictions in LA County? I don't know right now. I know you have to show a card. I don't do cards, uh, right. or you have to show a picture of your card. Yeah, I don't have one. Um, so wait, uh, that, that means no I, dick show for me. I thought you were gonna go to fucking uh, uh, Anaheim or something out, out of the county. And uh, no, uh, You're well, killing the, me. The the uh, the restrictions just got lifted like two days ago in California. Okay. So um, LA won't be too I, far behind. Otherwise, they'll have a yeah. I think protest. LA just said we're gonna go longer, but I have no idea what they're doing right now. Well, I'll keep my eyes uh, on it. Okay. I'll keep my eyes on it because, like I said, if if there's no if there's none of the bullshit restrictions, like look, I would have preferred you just said fucking going back to Tampa. Cause, yeah. hmm. dude, you saw it. That was a, that was literally Sodom and Gomorrah. It was literally, I dude. I remember looking at you, being like, "Dick, you see this shit?" Like, <laughs> and remember, everybody was shut down at that point, right? We walk yeah. in, cigar bars, hoes yeah. going ahead and getting picked up by randos off the street. Yeah, uh, guys great. on crotch rockets. That might be a chick. It might be a tranny. You don't know. You just let it ride. <laughs> that was great. Oh, you get more of that in LA County. Great. Oh, definitely. <laughs> oh, Dick. Maybe so I'll just rent a field. Quick, yeah, uh, quick question for you. So your first road rage was Philly, right? Yeah. Was there ever a moment when you were planning that where you've like, where, where you said to yourself, "I have made a huge fucking mistake"? Uh, no. I just got places that were too small. I kept getting places. Like I got a hundred seat bar, and then I sold a hundred tickets in like five minutes. And I was like, "Uh oh, this Uh-oh. is a problem." <laughs> There's a problem. Uh, and then a- another one, it was like 200, and those were gone. So I think BD Beats finally got us the Trocadero, which was big enough for to get everybody in there. Uh, I, th- I, I knew it was going to be a-, a shit show from yeah. the beginning. So uh, everything went according to that plan. There were no surprises. Because you know, I'm, th- I'm thinking about uh, doing, uh, doing a sh- show for Drexel sometime next year but or this year yeah, you, oh, yeah. you gotta be way bigger for that i mean to do no, a, a live to do a live show no you don't drax if yeah. we can pull 75 people in and i think we can you can yeah. put on just a line of a show <laughs> yeah well, i mean good luck. yeah good luck is right because <laughs> venue people content it's a lot of work honestly it's, there's not a lot oh, of money I know in it's it. a it's lot fun but yeah <laughs> well i remember i tried putting on one for you uh here in calgary i was talking to uh diego Oh, were um, you? Yeah. Stampede? Yeah, yeah. Then uh, yeah. it just fell apart. Um, yeah. The other that. thing I was worried, too, is he'd come up to the border and they'd be like, no, go fuck yourself. And I'd Me be like, too. all right, well, now, well, now we got to refund everyone. And we're not going to Now I'm worried about back. that all the time. Well, yeah. Australia proved it, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's why I was uh, like, no, you know what? We're maybe some other time. I don't know. 
<laughs> maybe maybe we don't need to do a show. Maybe you just come up to enjoy Stampede. That would be nice. But anyway, I've heard good things. All right, guys. We appreciate um, you coming on. Thanks for having me on. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I gotta go to look at sex dolls. <laughs> oh, you better. You better buy two. Uh, buy maple. Huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, one and a half. <laughs> uh, maple's a short stack. Dick, you gotta oh, get on okay. it, man. Yeah, yeah. Look up maple, brother. But yeah, okay. Dick, thanks for coming on. Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, I tell all you guys every every time, man. Fucking stay toxic, cause yeah, I want fucking I guys that. out here being toxic, <laughs> be degenerate, be everything that Good you fucking advice. are, cause I, well, Dick. These guys aren't getting the results that they, they desire because they're sitting there kowtowing. Well, I better not yeah. say that. I better not. Dude, just be who you fuck you are. But, dude, even if you say, yeah, I fuck a goblin sex doll, <laughs> a girl's going to, if she says you're a creep, you're a creep. If she says, oh, what the hell is a goblin sex doll? I'll show you. See if you can fuck me better than this <laughs> goblin sex doll. That's a better <laughs> pickup line than fucking, well, yeah. I'm just saying that just to see how you'd react. And fuck that, dude. Yeah. Be proud I of mean, your generosity. You're never going to get the results you want anyway, so it's all right. All right. <laughs> all right. Bye, Good night, guys. everyone. Peace out, everybody. Frosty.